Thanks for tuning into the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and comment if you like the show and who you'd like to see in a future episode. Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast. We are joined with Emery King. Um, we were trying to figure out what we would call him instead of special guest, and then we had technical difficulties because I'm an idiot and I didn't test enough before we decided to use a new app for our remote guests. Uh, Emery, welcome. That is how you pronounce it, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Man, I first met you, well, that had to have been t- like 2019, right? I, yeah, it was it was my my second time on dr- drinking bros, and I, you were you were the engineer, and you had all this equipment. I remember talking to you, and I was just like enamored with all the cool stuff you had going on. Yeah, I was, so I was there helping with so I I did web development and stuff, and I was there helping with uh, some of their IT stuff because you can tell when somebody's like, I'm just going to go to Best Buy and buy something off the shelf, versus somebody that has experience in the industry and they're like no dude you can't use consumer stuff for this and they yeah. kind of like they're like we have really good cameras we have really good microphones but we're using a macbook to record this pro- professional productions Doesn't yeah you'd be like right it's now if you see this you would definitely downgraded right. compared to how technical it was on the uh on the yeah. uh drinking and bros podcast but yeah you know you're stuck man i was man, impressed appreciate it um so I guess we'll, we'll jump right into just a bunch of questions. My wife wasn't really familiar with who you were until recently. Wasn't really familiar is a really nice way of saying I'd never heard of you in my entire life. I'm so well, that means you have good me taste. taste. She, well, <laughs> I say that she's uncultured. So yeah. it, He holds it over my apparently very short head. <laughs> so um, let's, let's go right to the beginning of everything. Uh, you know, I, I vaguely know that uh, you were in prison for a, a stint yeah. um, many, many years ago. How did you go from felon to internet comedian? I f- it just, it feels like it was just overnight. I mean, I'm sure that's not what it was, but how, the, how was it for you? Yeah, it yeah, took it about, about a decade, decade before I, I finally went, I went like viral or whatever. But when I went when to I prison, went to you know, I was, uh, you know, I went to my first mental home when I was eight, several thereafter. I lived on the streets at age 11. And uh, how I'd feed myself was I'd go to gas stations at around midnight and I'd sweep their parking lots for their leftover hot dogs and donuts. I slept in breezeways, sleep, I slept, you know, crashed with Mexicans and stuff. I speak pretty fluent Spanish and uh, when I was when 16, I, well, it, when I was about 14, I went from sweeping their parking lots to sticking them up. When I was 16, I got uh, indicted on armed robbery and tried as an adult. And I was facing 20 years. I had a $150,000 full cash bond. And I got out when I was 21. When I was in prison, I met, I grew up pretty much without my father. Uh, you know, obviously, and you know, I lived in Irish Catholic boys' home and stuff and many other homes. But um, so when the police would get you when you lived on the street as a youth, they would just drop you off at a, a youth shelter, like basically a homeless shelter for kids. Right. But uh, when I went to prison, man, I met this guy, Michael Robertson, and I just found out he died last August, but he became like a father to me and taught me so much. And I, I really, I've never really gave him so much credit, you know, until after he passed and I realized, man, I wouldn't be where I'm. He didn't take me under his wing and teach me decorum, respect, accountability. He really did. And he didn't have to do all that, but he spent every day beating the shit into my head. And um, so when I got out of prison, uh, I lived in a few homeless shelters and, you know, slowly got on my feet. And um, and in 2006, I had my oldest daughter, the one whose MacBook I'm on. And she was abandoned at birth, and I raised her by myself. And when she was about a year old, her mother had went to prison, out of prison. And hit me up, and she goes, can I see my daughter? And I said, uh, yeah, because I'm not a piece of shit. So I met her at this Waffle House in Louisville, and we're sitting there eating. You know, she's spending time with the kid, and, uh, man, two sheriffs pull up. No, I've had this baby every day of my life. So I stayed with my mother, and I worked third shift at Lowe's across the street. And when I got home... I took care of the baby all day when my mother worked. And then, so anytime I got to sleep was only when my daughter was taking a nap. So it was rough. But the two sheriffs came in, they took my daughter, gave her to her, and she left. She had pulled that court stuff on me and, and 
outsmart oh, me. And to make a long make story a long short, story short, I was devastated. devastated. And, um, and um, I was fighting, I was fighting in court for a couple months, months, and I wasn't, I wasn't getting anywhere. Anything. You know, I'm I'm a dad. dad. You know, we didn't have a lot of rights. I assume they still don't. I had, uh, I decided to end my life. And so I gave away all my possessions. I had like a brand new Wii in a box I gave to some kid. His name was Cole North. I remember his name. I gave away this my, my little flat screen TV. And I, I'd wake up with belts around my neck. And I just thought I would jump off my mom's third story condo. But I was like, oh, I'll just be paralyzed. you know. So I found out a way I was going to, to this day. It's only known to me. And... I was, cr I, I gave myself two weeks to do it and I was crashing on this girl's couch, you know, devastated over my daughter being gone. And, uh, man, YouTube had just come out in 2006 and I, I overheard somebody say, you can be on YouTube today and Jay Leno tonight. I was like, what's this YouTube thing? What's this YouTube? So I went to her computer room, you know, back in the day, they had computer rooms and I typed in youtube.com and man, I laughed and laughed and laughed until I fucking cried. I watched, I watched videos watch of people TV farting into their microphones, microphone, prank calls. Prank Tom Abe, who's a friend of mine now. And I saw the little button at the top and it said, create champ. And I said, nope. I can do this. Two months later, back in the day, they used to put ribbons on your channel. Two months later, I was a 24th top rated comedian on YouTube. And it saved my life. And I got my daughter back and the mother, we haven't seen her since. And now my daughter's 17. But that, that's it in a nutshell. I'm sorry about it. No, no, that's that's wild. I I had no I'm idea so that part sorry. of it. Yeah, it's dude. I, you know, I've been through some shit, man, and nothing was worse than my daughter being taken from me, man. I, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I think any parent can understand that. Man. Yeah. Uh, Have you stepped foot in a Waffle House since? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm from Wait, Kentucky, no man. You know, it's kind of, kind of what we do. I love Waffle House. She she. We'll eat uh, grilled cheese from there, and that's about it. So, I. That's not fucking true. Okay. Their great. waffles can kick, but no, I meant that was a terrible, yeah. terrible day. It was. If it, it was, happened it at happened. Denny's, yeah, I would never step foot in there. <laughs> Donald, we're talking about Waffle House. Like, oh my God. That's perfect. That's hilarious. Um, So, the first video that I ever remember seeing of yours was the. uh. And I, I still remember, I, I recreate the voice all the time. The Chev Chevrolet uh, Silverado. Silverado. I, I, I loved it. You know, I, I thought it was hilarious. I'm a Ford guy. We both actually drive Chevys. We we actually just had to drop off her Suburban at the Chevy I converted you. this morning. Yeah. There you go. That, that what was. had happened is I moved, I moved down, down to this country-ass town yeah. in like in 2003. Like, I got out of the got city. Out of the I'm city. from the city. And I moved down there and it was yeah, culture cool. shock. All these guys we were country. Guys. And so I, I worked on a farm and I drove and a tractor for 11 years. And after work, all these rednecks would get around their trucks and have their hoods pop. And they'd be like, you know, yeah, man, I, mean, I put a Ford Tech Viper 9 and mine to pay load. And they would say all this shit that I didn't understand. So the whole video of the Civil Raider was me making fun, of, you know, the shit they would say and, and the alpha male stuff. And so before that, I'd done. 500 videos and that one went viral and I, I realized afterwards I said oh my god I lucked into that the Ford versus Chevy rivalry so then I kind of ran with it did Xbox versus PlayStation iPhone versus Android I did some more Ford parodies or whatever I got lucky I really did man so everything else kind of domino affected that's awesome we uh we have not had our viral moment we've had a controversial span right at the beginning oh um, do, tell. do tell do you are you familiar with uh mike glover from fieldcraft survival sounds so familiar. so familiar he's uh they're out of utah they also have locations in charlotte um he's a he's not really a gun tuber but he's kind of he's kind of in that space but not really um fieldcraft is one of the larger like preparedness he's actually the host this year um, for Surviving Man, is that what it was, I believe it's called? It's a TV show. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so he he was arrested for uh domestic violence charges back in March, and we had just happened to have an episode that we couldn't run. We had some technical difficulties, and we didn't figure it out until after. And I told her, I was like, "Hey, I know who Mike is. I know a little bit about this situation." We should, you know, 
put something out and about I've it. I've never we're, heard we're of gonna, him yeah, we'll in my the, life. So it, I was just going in blind also. It had just started <laughs> trending on Reddit. It, it, I think it was like the 17th or 20th episode or whatever of our show. This will be like closer to 90. This episode is. Um, and so we put it out. And the morning that we put it out, we were, took the kids to the zoo out in Asheville or Ashburn. Ashburn. Yeah. Ashburn. There we go. And we pulled into the parking lot and I looked at my phone and we were already like 4,000 views. And our normal views at that point were like 50. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we rode that for a little bit, kind of put out, you know, little updates and stuff as court. Cause we were, we were being hounded by his, uh, you know, people that loved him and loved his content. And so we kind of rode that train for a little while and made some people angry. And, uh, now I'm dealing with Google every other time we upload a video, they're telling me that it's uh campaign or uh, election advertising. So I'm a hundred percent certain this video, even if we don't talk anything about politics, will be marked get, as political yeah. or election campaign. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Well, it's that You're time for president, just so you yeah. know. It's that time. Now, the, the domestic violence stuff, I've been arrested for it twice, never, never touched them. They, they one of them took a DVO out of me and it was just, it was, it was lies. And, uh, women weaponize that uh, against men quite a bit. So I don't, I'm not really with that whole believe her thing. Um, so, but I, I have put my hands on women, uh, two times in my life. One was beating the ever living shit out of me and cut my chest open pretty good. And the second one was in my pocket in a bar trying to rob me. You know, I turned around and like slapped her off of me. And yeah, I can admit that, but you know, I, I'm not with the whole, I don't check IDs, man. If you're beating the shit out of me or trying to rob me, man, I, I'm, I don't care if you're fucking 15. I don't, I really don't care if you're, you know, but so, but the, the formal charges that were brought against me, they were dropped, but I, you know, I, one of them, I had to, I had a warrant, I had to go serve it, you know, so I had to walk into jail and then walk right out with my attorney, but it was embarrassing. My, you know, I had my mug shot. I made it my profile picture. I, I leaned into it. How long ago was this? Uh, two years ago, maybe. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Oh, an ex that I have been nothing been to do with that I treated yeah. like. And uh, I mean, she walked around wearing one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of jewelry. You know, Christian Louboutin heels. And uh, I'm sorry, how did you say that? Christian Louboutin. <laughs> how are you saying? Louboutin. Oh, no, it's Lou. No. Louboutin. I, I, I know my fashion. I know my fashion. I'm Gucci. How do you say it? Gucci. Oh, I thought you were saying like Gucci. How do you how say, say Versace? Versace? Versace. 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 I would I would know how to say it no matter what. I'm a <laughs> I'm a t shirt and shorts all year round, a hoodie when it gets cold kind of guy. So I'm gonna look I'm up gonna the Louboutin. I'm pretty sure I got that right, but you you might have me on that. I don't know. You look. will have rocked my world if I've been saying it incorrectly this entire time. I think it's Louboutin. Louboutin. We had we had something recently I have a couple that, of that uh you didn't believe me on how I pronounce something. You're like, no, I'm just my, I'm, I'm saying it my way forever. You're never going to change it. I genuinely don't remember. <laughs> but, but, but the name of the wrong, podcast is She's Right. 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 So, so yes. yeah. what are you yeah. going to do? Yeah. We, uh, I, so I, I had this just, we had, we'd been talking about it for like a year, maybe even longer. We should do a podcast. We should do a podcast. We should do a podcast. And I was sitting there one day and I was like, she's wrong. She's right. Everybody would, everybody would love it. It'd be funny. It's a play on words. Oh my God, man. The stuff that I get, the comments are like, well, you're obviously a male feminist and you hate men. And I'm like, clearly you don't watch any of our content. Yeah. It's clearly he's never been in a relationship. You know what I mean? yeah. I'm like, it's it pretty much ends with me adamantly saying I'm right. And she's wrong about everything. It's just the title is he's wrong. She's right. You would, you, I personally, I think any man can agree that like my girlfriend, I'm like, Shock sometimes how after two days of you know, pitting against each other, I'm like, oh my God, she's right. And I have to go to her and be like, oh, hey, you were right about this. You know, I should have done it this way, this way. So, you know, behind every uh, good Please man is a, is a great one. Please, I beg of you. <laughs> beg. We, we acknowledge it by not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, putting our head down and the it's other a fucking the lie. Other per no, 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 it's the other person knows they're right. And you're just like, I'm not going to say it. You know it, and I know it, but I'm not. Neither of us say it. What have you ever said that I was right about something that you were literally like just like about, a day about? or two ago? I was like, "Nope, I'm going to give you this. You were right. I was wrong." Yeah. 
Yeah, I remember that. And I said exactly like that. Whereas you have literally never done that for me. Ever. Hey, she's right. Right. You're right right now. Anyways, <laughs> let's talk about your daughters. You have five, right? Yeah, five, yeah daughters. five daughters. Five daughters. And you mentioned the birth story with the first. Yes. I believe you have kind of similar stories with the others. Is that correct? You've raised it, them solo, most of them. Well, my 17-year-old I've raised pretty much from day one, except for those two months or whatever, three, four months, maybe. Then my, I have a 14-year-old and a 12-year-old, or 13 now. they got the same mother. They live with me pretty much. Um, my three-year-old abandoned at birth. The mother, the second, the day after she had her, she goes, I can't do this. And I was like, well, catch an Uber. And I pretty much uh, saw her a little bit for like the first month. And we haven't heard or seen from her since, except for February. Last February, she emailed me and wanted my daughter's social security number to see if she can claim her. I know, man. You know, partially this is my fault because I'm very impulsive. I'm very, um, I can fix this person. My parents broke. So, you know, I accept the responsibility. But then I got with my new girlfriend, who is amazing. And now we have a one-year-old daughter. She turned one September 1st. Are, yeah. are all five of them biologically yours or? Um, um, yeah, I've, I've never done I've never a DNA, DNA test. That's my youngest. So, so sorry. I, I meant that to say, because you said they were abandoned and that mm-hmm. made me think that maybe you adopted them rather than. No, they were- no, I was, um, um so I, my three-year-old, I was in the maternity ward with all these moms. And I stayed there for seven days. She was born uh, going through withdrawals off opiates. I know, again. So I had to count all her sneezes. Your three-year-old? Stuff. She, my three-year-old, yes. And uh, just a nightmare. I got this girl pregnant. And, you know, I, I take a lot of accountability for my, my decision-making and my impulsive, you know, problems. But uh, but she's she's great. She's amazing. She's healthy and uh, crazy. She's my insanity. I wouldn't change it for the world. But no, so it was funny because when you said that, um, somebody asked me on a live one day, they said, if you found out your daughters weren't yours, what would you do? I called them all into the room and I said, hey, this person asked if, you know, if I'd found out or we did a DNA test and y'all weren't mine and I wasn't biological dad and matter. And they're like, can we go now? And it just wouldn't matter. You know what I mean? It's, I wouldn't give quick shits. We your just, dad, you raised them. Right. We would laugh. And just, right. you know, kids are born from your heart, you know. Mm-hmm. I get I get flack all the time because I don't refer all four are her biologically, but mm-hmm. I just I say they're Mike. I don't ever say I'm stepdad or whatever unless somebody really is getting into the details or they realize, oh, you guys have only been together for four years and all of the kids are older than that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you just found them on the street somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, so do you have any biologically? I, I do not. Thank God. Do you want to? He does not need to procreate. No, I just, I had never been in a relationship long enough up until her and I got together where I had really wanted to with that person. That should have been a huge red flag with me going into a relationship, <laughs> knowing that he had never been with a woman long enough to even. Now, are you, are you done? Uh, you have four you have kids, so I mean, you're probably, probably ultimately done, I'm assuming. We've had this conversation a couple of times. I actually would love to have more. Um, I don't know that my body would allow me to have more. Yeah, well, you have the tough um, job. You know, we got the easy job. Yeah. My my last birth was, um, I had all of my children naturally. Um, he, he had his cord wrapped around his neck and we both almost died in childbirth. So I don't know that my body would allow me to go through that again, but... Um, it's a conversation that we've had a couple of times and no, I completely understand. Completely That's understand. scary. It's not off the table, but any, any time she's like, I've been feeling sick for a couple of days. I'm like, you're pregnant. <laughs> I know you are. It's going to be a boy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy it. I think I make a pretty good stepdad for the most part. For the most part. I, I just, I can't even picture you holding a baby. So you came in to my children's lives when my youngest was turning five. Um, so just you, you missed the baby stage completely. You getting up in the middle of the night. I can't picture you handing the baby to me to well, nurse. I, I have, can't picture. I wouldn't have to get up because I'd still be awake. I, just, <laughs> I can't physically imagine it. Oh, it'd, it'd be the best. 
That's the best. Getting up with them in the middle of the night, rolling them, rocking them. It's you know, and it comes naturally. I, I'm rooting for you. I think you would. I think you would shine. See, <laughs> he's knows, rooting for you. He knows. He knows a good guy when he sees one. <laughs> You have met one whole time in real life. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I tell people the story and, all the time. Oh, wait. Well, no, 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 no. You said you don't have a good picker. So actually, <laughs> no. The, uh, I, I tell people the story uh, pretty frequently because I, I remember I was there and I had no idea you were with uh, JT, Ross, and Dan. And um, I was in the, uh, they're like the sound, the engineering room or whatever with, the other guy that was back there and i saw ross and dan walk in jt we were supposed to have a meeting shortly after that that's the whole reason that i was there and then you walked in you're like man what's up a memory and i'm like yeah i know who you are <laughs> i follow you on instagram yeah. Yeah. really that's what you said um, <laughs> I, I think i said i followed him maybe i don't know but we took it we took a selfie right there in the in the studio i was yeah. the awkward fan <laughs> The funny yeah. thing about Dan, Dan, and I, I have so much respect for Dan. I love him to death. And he, oh, he was so good to me every time I've come out to the podcast. But we argue a lot behind the scenes in inboxes about certain takes. I mean, he's jumped my shit, a little bit vice versa. And I, I follow his Citizen podcast on Instagram, and which is a great podcast. It's so underrated. But I notice I, I click like on every single thing. Uh, short that he posts, and I'm like, motherfucker. Next time you argue with me, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna say, motherfucker. I'm always supporting you, fuck ass. But he is, he is, he is just a smart dude. Yeah. I, so I haven't talked to Dan in a while because he posted. This has been like two years ago now. Um, he posted something on Instagram or Twitter. He was using a pellet smoker, and. I made oh my the, god, you trashed him for using a pellet smoker. I can already yep, yep. imagine where this is going. I, I said something along the lines of, nobody respects you using the Easy Bake Oven, turn in your man card. Oh my god. Did he get mad? Yeah, he blocked me, and then <laughs> he, he texted me about 15 minutes later and said, don't ever fucking call me or text me, fuck you. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, dude. Now, I, 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 and people say line. men aren't emotional. Yeah. What was that? What were you saying? Oh, now our chat log, which, you know, I would never leave or nothing, yeah. but man, yeah, he's jumped my shit quite a bit, but I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm like, yeah, I don't feel like you're very thin scanned or anything. And so I just take on chin, but also I'm, I'm shocked he hasn't blocked me yet. Uh, you know, just because I kind of go at it with him, but I do, I think he's fascinating. I think he's very smart and I, th I like him. I think he's, I think he's more, uh, he's deeper than Joe Rogan. I, I hope his podcast, you know, takes, takes off. Yeah. I, I thought so originally. I believe when he started that, he was doing it with Dakota, Dakota Meyer. Yeah, and I, I don't know if Dakota's still on it or not. We went and, at I over Dakota Meyer too. Man. Yeah, what was what was that? I said I don't know why you were looking at me for that answer. I wouldn't know. Look at him. Oh no, he would just, know. I'm just he, looking. He follows him. Just looking around, just just to put eyes on everyone. Um. Yeah, I I haven't followed any of their content at all recently, just because. I don't, I don't do any work for them anymore. And it's, it's so hard. And I, it, for you, I'm sure as somebody who, you know, creates content and does stuff all the time, it's so hard to go through the process of creating your content, editing your content, getting your content published, following up with it, and then still mm -hmm. trying to find time to consume other people's content. Yeah. yeah. I try not to consume because I'm, I'm a, so afraid of parallel thinking. Like if I watch a video. And like Tom May is one of my best friends, and I have to stay away from his videos because I don't want to, six months down the road, do a video. It's got similarities where I just, so I stay away from watching other people's shit, and that way nobody can call me out. You know what I mean? I did some thing on Twitter a while back where I said I started this motorcycle group called the F Word. I don't know what we can say on here. And people were like, yeah, that's a South Park, South Park episode. Park, yeah. They're like, that's a South Park episode. I said, I've never seen the episode. So great minds think alike. So I don't know. Gotcha. Yeah, I've seen, I've, I've had some ideas periodically where I'm like, this is going to be really, really funny. And sometimes I'll look it up. I'll just Google. I'll be like, yeah, yeah. Is, is anything even vaguely come up or about this? But I've also never actually had anything that I've organically made really catch traction outside of like the community of people who know me. Yeah. So, but again, you know, we're, we've only been at this for six months, so yeah, yeah. there's still time. 
Well, I know what you're saying. There's trepidation when you come up with a good idea and you want to put it out there. There's always this trepidation where it's like, oh, my God, you know, surely to God, somebody had a similar concept, whatever. But this confidence because I don't consume like hardly anything. And I'm like, I just put it out. And I'm just kind of like, I know I'm not a hack. So here's what it is. I don't, you've probably seen the uh, Cybertruck and uh, Toyota dealership video. The girl, bigger sales girl, she's copying everything that the people are doing with the Cybertruck, like putting a stroller in the back and pushing the buttons to make the tail. Oh, she has the minivan. Yeah. Yeah, she's yeah, like, yeah. 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 I got the, almost the same kind of van. So all of the comments that I saw on that were how the girl from the Toyota dealership copied somebody else. And I was like, she's the thing me. is, not everybody has seen everything. You know, sometimes it's okay to adapt or, you know, copy an idea because not everybody's audience has seen it. But now that's the only thing in her comments mm -hmm. is how she copied somebody else. And that's fine. But she, I don't think I don't, she did. I think she's think showing like, like, hey, you know, I don't need a cyber truck. My, my band does all the same shit. Yep. Yeah. She, uh, have you seen it? No, but she, the cancel culture is so she was, prevalent that she everybody was, is ready to just... Get yeah, on everybody. They were showing like how many uh, car seats the Cybertruck could hold. Mm. And then she gets in, she has all these car seats in the middle row. And mm. then she herself is sitting all the way in the, the, back. Way the third row. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. She's, and she's a bigger girl. And like when she was sitting back there so comfortably, I'm like, she, I mean, she almost had me sold on the land. <laughs> I got a Kia Carnival. I don't think it's don't the same. I think she has a Honda Odyssey or something. I don't know. She uh, swore up and down. That there was no way in hell she was getting a, a minivan at any point in time. So she went from a Tahoe to a Suburban. Yeah. But Burton's I will say, sometimes when you see how quickly people can get in and out of a minivan, like in the school drop-off or school yeah, pickup. No. Okay. The minivan is fabulous for the zero to five stage in life. When they're, oh, age range. Okay. Yeah, age range. So when they're in car seats still, when you're having to carry the car seat in and out. Absolutely. The sliding doors are amazing. Um, worrying about popping the door open and hitting the person next to you with the, the three-year-old unboxing yeah, their yeah. car seat. and yeah. whoosh, whoosh. Before I got the before van, I, got, I had a yeah, Lincoln had a, Aviator. Yeah. And you're, I mean, you're talking about $100,000 vehicles. So when, when my, you know, kids, even my, my 12-year-old, well, she's 12 at the time. I jump out her and I'm like, I'm going to open the door yeah. for you. I'm like, oh, I'm like, but I know uh, training into the van, I like yeah, it a lot better. We still will pull into a parking lot somewhere. And if it's if it's even kind of close or, you know, maybe we backed in or the other person pulled forward and there's the possibility where you even might hit their mirror, you know, we'll always say, oh, everybody get out on the on this side. Or right. This side. Yeah, 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 for sure. Get a lot everybody of get all cash aside. Yep. Everybody get yeah. <laughs> Knock on wood. Nothing, nothing bad has happened yet. Oh, you jinxed it for sure. No, I knocked on wood. We're good. <laughs> hey, backing up to that young lady that does the video comparing to the Cybertruck, bookmark this. I think it's only a matter of time before Elon might gift her a Cybertruck. The she likes it better. It'd be a hell of a promotional. Yeah, yeah Elon's Elon's quirky like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I could definitely, I could see that, especially with trying to eat her words. Well, he's no, 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 not that. He is the kind of person where. He goes and shares on Twitter specifically when they made the uh, technical, and now um, Brandon Herrera made the the Warthog. Warthog. Yeah, Elon. Somebody else had like shared the clip, mm -hmm. but Elon had reposted it, and Brandon responded. He was like, "Hey, man, we're both in Texas. You can come by and drive it and shoot it sometime." You know, like just hey, hit me Br up. Brandon, Brandon follows, follows me on me Twitter, on Twitter or, X, or X, whatever, and I saw where he followed me like a year and a half ago. And I'm like, this guy's got a lot of views. And I'm like, oh, he's a, a YouTuber gun guy. And then one day I watched one of his videos. Oh, man, I got hooked. I, I already saw him back. It was like this big account. He's really popular. And I ended up messaging him. I'm like, oh, my God, I thought you were like this gun YouTuber guy. And I, I don't box him like that. I think a lot of people could arguably Oh man, I got oh, man, so I much out of his content. He's a really good really follow. Good. Brandon Herrera's hilarious. Yeah, I uh, I followed him on YouTube years ago because of Demolition Ranch, Matt Carricker, and her and I have talked about this. the The collabs in the social media space are what creators kind of live and die by. Once you yeah. hit, you know, a certain stage in your uh, content creation career, the only way to make that next big step is to get a collaboration with somebody and that's 
pretty much the only way that I find new content now. Yeah. I don't I don't seek out anything unless I've seen it multiple times. I stay Speaking away from it. What's your favorite collab? I've only done like, done like four. four. Really? really? Officer, Officer Baker, Officer Baker uh, Donnie, Baker, Donnie Baker, and Tom Mabe. And I think that, I guess my favorite, no, I don't know if I've ever, yeah, I've collabed yeah, with Tom. Collab we did a music video, video but, um, but Donnie Baker Donnie just Baker. passed away. He was a good yeah, friend of mine. So I'm going to have to give that to Donnie. Donnie? Yeah, Donnie. What was the uh, what was the video? Um, so I used to listen to Donnie on the radio here, and my dad also passed away. But my dad used to quote him, and my, my dad would say something. I'd be like, "Are you serious?" And he go, "State law." And so eventually, Donnie Baker made a video about YouTube, and I'm like, "It's surreal." And I'm like, "What?" So he ends up reaching out, and he goes, "Man, come up to Indianapolis, it's, you know, kick it, just hang out, and go to Bob and Tom, and and." and shoot little uh, video so, so in the video, video i posted on I posted twitter and was remembering donnie like uh, on the anniversary of his death posted it and in the video i don't know if people can see it visibly but i'm a nervous wreck i'm out matt this guy's a, a legend and so i'm trying to be funny in the video and we're winging it it's just improv and uh i don't know how i did but i know that when we were shooting it i was just outgunned and you know nervous as shit. He, he was just he was tremendous he really was it's awesome. I I had tried telling her who Bob and Tom was. I'm I'm from uh, Mishawaka, South Bend area originally. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, I grew up. I I didn't really listen to it myself, but you know, there was always an adult or somebody that I was my parents or oh, yeah. my dad's yeah. employees and stuff like that that would have it on. So I'm very very mm -hmm. familiar with it. Um, and I tried to explain who they were to her because I thought it was a national brand. I didn't realize that they didn't really know who they were. They me. were syndicated out in the Midwest at some point, but I know that they're really local to us for sure. But so I go to the Bob and Tom show with Donnie Baker and Donnie, which is Ron Six, but he's rolling around this little luggage, little luggage rolling around. I said, what is that? He goes, that's Donnie Baker. So he's got his wig and all this stuff. So I'm in the green room and I hear this voice behind me. It's Tom. And I it's, just surreal not to hear coming through your car speakers and i turn around and i'm like it's just no way and he's really nice so before i left the show bob comes out and he goes so what are you doing here with donnie and i was like oh i was like well i'm a social media guy i've got this privilege of social media and i just look up to donnie because you know he's a real comedian knocking down doors getting on stage and i just i'm learning from him and all that and he, he was like oh, okay okay man i ended up leaving and found that bob cavoyan followed me on twitter and i just i don't want to fame radio guy but i lost my shit so i follow him obviously i followed him first and i get to watch his travels with his wife becky and all that and it just two radio oh here's the thing too guys donnie or tom may but bob and tom have or well had zero relationship outside of their their no they didn't hang out they didn't go fishing they didn't do none of that they showed up they worked and they left and i think that was part of the dynamic you know interesting yeah that's maybe that's what's failing on our show we live and breathe together no um well uh Adam Savage and um, what's his name for Mythbusters? They hated each other. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you another one. Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. I always thought their chemistry, they got to be best friends. And Richard Pryor was a party animal. Gene Wilder was a workhorse. And, you know, Pryor would show up late and Gene Wilder. And I couldn't believe, you know, I, I might be a little older than you know, but they're like, hear no evil, see no evil, stir crazy. They were magical and they didn't get along. Interesting. Maybe that's what the magic is. You have to find somebody <laughs> that you just mortally hate. Uh, yeah, I think that might be really like, easy to do for you. No, I don't hate anybody. I love no, everyone. No, I meant I hate you. No. <laughs> um, so... I guess we can we can switch gears here. We can come back to the social media stuff because I do have some questions and stuff for you. But uh, first thing I noticed when we jumped on here was the uh, the polo. I know that's. Your, I was uh, waiting to ask you that too. So I do know about it. <laughs> oh, um, okay, go for it. And uh, I, I've seen you. You've posted numbers previously, um, and I know you've talked a lot about how the products that you sell are products very specific to the the mixtures. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what you want to call the formulations. Of things that you specifically like, yes. Um, yes. Do you think that that's the way that you're going to pivot indefinitely, or mm -hmm. do you still want to stay in the comedy stuff? How's that working out for you? Um, uh, man, I, I'm so burnt out, and people ask me, 
I can I can go outside right now in my driveway. Every video I've ever done is off the top of my head for the most part. But I could go outside my driveway right now and stand around my Kia Carnival and make a video and talk about its tornado. And I I could do a million hits easy. I know I can. And so I've done it a million, well, quite a bit of times. But I'm just so burnt out and it gets old. I, I think it's like playing a video game with all the cheats on. And I'm not saying I'm that. Cool, you're cool, cool. Yeah, cool. But, but it's it just becomes a point where it's like kind of no fun. It's like my my first challenge was to get a million views. 2014, I did, and I'm like, oh man, I got, I'm a, I'm in the Million Hits Club. Then I was like, I want a million followers, and I did that on like every platform. And now it's like, you know, where where do I? Guys, so I'm, then I went for a million subscribers on YouTube, got to 900,000. I'm like the monetizing platform. So I just scrapped my YouTube and started the new one. So when yeah, you talked earlier where you're getting like 50, or you were getting like 50 like hits, you know, the one episode with that guy did like 4,000. I mean, I'm, I'm averaging like right under a thousand views per video and I like it. It's, it I'm back to square one. I, I like, I reset the game. Yeah. So I'm currently doing that, but I'm just burnt out on making new material. But so to pivot to this in 2016, man, I was on Tramadol, Xanax and Lexapro for the press and and my insurance guy gave me a bag of gummy bears, medical gummy bears. I'm like, oh, dude, I don't do weed or drugs or nothing like that. And he's like, dude, just take them, just take them. So finally, three weeks later, I'm laying in the bed with my ex. And I'm like, I'll take one if you take one. I had them stashed in the drawer. Finally talked her into it. She took one. I took one. About an hour and a half later, I'm like, I had this epiphany. And I'm like, this is amazing. So I came off all my medications that were making me a zombie. They were making me fat and lazy. And, um knocking me out i was a zombie so man i, I got real passionate about it and uh so this is my i did cbd for a while now so I'm straight over to because you know the laws have changed so you know i'm doing uh you know quite a few products i have a website it's, it's all dirt cheap I, I tell people if you knew what i made versus my sales i mean i'm doing like a quarter million sales this year alone and it's like if you knew what i made from that it's laughable but I, I really want people to get off their shit. So there's sixty dollar items in every dispensary you see. I sell it for thirty five. I have the smallest markup because I just want you to get off your fucking Xanax. You know, get off your Lexapro. There's there's natural ways of living lives. That's a it's a huge push in the uh, veteran space. Yes, uh, I sell a lot. PTSD about. and stuff like that. Um, I I know a lot. A lot of people, and you would look at these people and you would never guess in a million years without having a conversation with them, like Ben Bunn. That's the first thing when I met him when I was at DJM. Uh, so he's a former special operations guy. He owns a, uh, a CrossFit gym in Florida somewhere. And then he's on the board for a couple of veteran nonprofits. One of them is called Warrior Rising, who I was a marketing director for a couple of years ago. And <laughs> We were filming a commercial for his spirits company called Cold Zero. And the whole time, I mean, we're literally filming a commercial for vodka and, and whiskey. And he's talking about how he wants to get back home so he can throw a big tomahawk steak on the grill and smoke some weed. Yeah. I'm like, well, I'm I like, just, I had all these veterans come out of the woodwork. One of them's very well known, but I'll leave them nameless, but they've been microdosing shrooms. And I don't do shrooms. I've even tried to microdose them and it just wasn't for me. But I started carrying the products, the Amanita shrooms and muscamol and all that. I carry them on the site because the veterans are buying them up. They microdose them. And it's mood boosting for them and, and helps them deal with their PTSD. So it's, it's, that's been a whole thing there. So some, a lot of the product, I don't know. I hope I'm, I hope I'm making a difference. I guess that's where I'm So the, the thing that I think is the last remaining barrier because any cop, any police officer, sheriff's deputy, whatever that I've talked to, the only time that they care about it is if they're just using it to add on to everything else that you did. You know, you got pulled over for reckless driving and now you have drugs in your car and blah, blah, blah. But if you were just walking around or you were on your property and you were smoking, they don't care, mm -hmm. you know, and in a lot of States it's legal in some States it's medical only. Some states it's restable. It's, it's pretty much, you know, yeah, I see these kids nowadays and they're puffing their weed and their Snapchats. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I was born in 79. If you got caught with a dime bag in the 90s, they were punching out your speakers, ripping up your carpets, tearing your car apart. You were losing your job. You're out of jail for at least three weeks, you know, going to court. It was like, you're not cool, man. Like, you're not a rebel. It's so, it's, it'd be like me showing up in a Pall Mall, you know, it's like, you know, 
So. Yeah. The, so the I think the the last remaining barrier, realistically, is just federal decriminalization because then you leave it up to the states whether they want to do it or not. But some of the plans that I've heard from a lot of people, and it's completely reasonable, is as long as it's not in a public space, you know, do it at home, do it wherever. Yeah. Just yeah. not at the park, yeah. not at your school, kid's school, the same places that you wouldn't go and smoke a cigarette in front of people. Right, right. And yeah, I think, I think that's fair. But I, I think the I think the biggest problem that the regulatory side of it has is there's not just a quick and dirty test like there is for like a DUI stop. Right, right. You could smell it on my clothes, but that doesn't mean that I did it today. Right, right. So speaking of the smell of weed, I took my. Uh, she's fourteen now, but she was like nine at the time. And I just said, I do one-on-ones with my daughters all the time. So I said, uh, man, you want to go to Vegas? And she's like, yeah, yeah, man, book the flight, hopped on a flight. We go to Vegas for the whole week. We're at the MGM Grand or whatever. And um, she could smell weed everywhere. Everybody in Vegas is smoking everywhere. She could smell it. And she's like, what is that? What is that? So one day when we got back home, we're driving in the car a couple weeks later. And we like passed gunk, got hit on the road. And I heard her in the back seat. She goes, it smells like Vegas. <laughs> funny so now that's so now our that's joke we smell weed we're like oh it's like vegas around here that's hilarious that is awesome especially because there are strains or at least when it when it goes bad they say it's skunked so i mean it yeah it, it goes it goes perfectly now i'm gonna say that it smells like vegas <laughs> yeah it's like vegas. Any, any any public space i'm not even gonna be like it smells like smoke it smells like weed or it smells like vegas and that's gonna confuse the kids because they've never been to vegas i've never yeah. been to vegas yeah. either yeah Oh, it smells like weed. That's better than a lot of other places that I've been. A lot of places just smell terrible. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, I, I think the only thing that I really can't tolerate the constant smell of is tobaccos. It's just one of those things where I just, I don't like it. I don't want to be around it. It ruins the experience of being wherever you are. Yeah. I'm and a smoker and I feel... Tagged. No, so it always seems you, you know the you know the memes or the analogies that people make where they're talking about the campfire and no matter where you go around the campfire the smoke follows you. Yes, I, I feel like anytime there's a somebody's out smoking in public, you the the smoke just follows everyone else. It's it's the if campfire. I spend a night drinking, drinking and if when I drink when I, I drink, chain smoke the next day. Can't hey, smell a smell cigarette. It. And so I get it. People should have to smell my cigarettes. Plus, when I, when I smoke one, if I'm in public, I butt it on the ground and I put the butt back in my... So, but not everybody's not like me. And they're, you know, you know pip, pip, pip. so try to keep it out of people's faces. But, man, I started smoking when I was nine. And I started inhaling when I was 11. And I remember all this because I was in the voice home at the time. And when I started inhaling, I got a break from this voice home I was at. And I thought it was so cool I was inhaling. I couldn't wait to show my friends, you know, because we all smoke in the woods and stuff. So that's why I remember that. But um, nowadays, man, I smoke four or five cigarettes a day unless I'm drinking. If I drink, man, I'll run through a whole pack. Terrible habit. Terrible habit. Have your daughters ever tried to throw away your cigarettes, hide them, or discard them in any way? No, nah, they know better. So I used my my dad is a smoker. He was smoking since he was fourteen years old. Um, he used to be a fisherman in Denmark, but anyways, so he picked it up as a that that that's what you did. Um, yeah, yeah. Anyways, so as a child, anytime he turned his back, I would throw away his cigarettes. I would hide them. I would beg and plead for him to please stop smoking. And finally, by the time I was like seven years old, I finally gave up. But I was just curious of any other children. If one of mine had begged begged and pleaded for me to stop smoking, I would quit cold turkey. No way, really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they never have. have. All right. I'm going to yell really loud. (laughs) Girls. Stop. Tell us. (laughs) So jumping right back real quick to the picking up the, the butts and stuff like that, that to me is the, the deal, like the deal maker for like being around somebody because I've had barbecues or, you know, get togethers and stuff in my house and people will just leave them in the driveway and in the, oh, that's uh, mad, mad disrespect. We yeah. still have one in the driveway from our barbecue like three weeks ago. I don't think it's unreasonable unreasonable to tell that person, come back and get him. Like, I would, it's disrespectful. 
I just, I remember walking out because what I've done forever, uh, we haven't really done anything here in the house that we're in, but my previous house and where I was at before that, I always made an effort to go around and tell the neighbors, hey, I'm having people over. If something's on your lawn or something like that, something's bothering you, call me, text me, knock on the door, whatever. If there's trash in your yard, I'll come pick it up in the morning. And we never had any issues. So for somebody to come to my house and do that, that's like, come on, man. Now, did they put the cigarette butt on the driveway and step on it to leave that black mush or did they just drop it? Uh, to be honest with you, I don't. I don't really remember. I know, I remember them being in like some of them in the cracks, but some of them were like, in the oh, that's so so dis- so, yeah. And it's not like the trash can was that far away, you know, if or just, just butting out on, out on the, the, on the street, on the, street, on the public road, road and just throw in your, your cigarette packs. Hey, but like I said, not everybody's a considerate everybody's smoker, smoker, like hardly anybody really. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not that old, but I'm old enough to remember when you could still in Indiana, at least smoke you know, in restaurants, and then they went to the divided, you know, like they'd have a big partitioned wall in between, and it was always, it was always divided, so you had the family side with your regular low-top tables, but the bar side was the smoking side, so I never even wanted to go into the bar because I didn't want to be with the smokers. It wasn't that I didn't want to drink, it's that I just didn't want to be with smokers. See, I think restaurants made the good move about non-smoking. When I for a while here, we had a fridge, this big boy. It shut down like five years ago, but you can still walk in there and they say smoking or not. And but 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 I think as far as bars go, I think you should be allowed to smoke in bars. I think people go there to drink, sin, smoke, pick up women, pick up men, whatever. And I think it's it's the time and place. But as far as restaurants, though, I definitely definitely agree with the non-smoking issue there. Yeah. So Michigan was really weird. Michigan, you go to a dive bar, and there's still people smoking in there and everything like that. But Michigan also, and this was weird to me even when I moved down here to North Carolina, um, bars and breweries and distilleries and stuff were family friendly. So you could bring your kids to them. And I was like, this is, this is really weird. And obviously now it's like a cultural thing and everybody does it. But 15 years ago or more, it wasn't really, especially in Indiana, it wasn't a thing. You didn't right. you didn't take your kids with you to the bar. Well, I went to, I New, went York went to New York City, City in 2003, I think. And I went up there, I have friends in Long Island, so I go up to New York, I'm hanging out, and they go to this bar, and I had never heard of a smoking ban in my life, and I fired up a cigarette. And they're like, no, 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 what are you doing? You can't smoke here. I'm like, what's talking to me? I can't smoke. We're in a bar. Like, what are you talking about? And it, it was a smoking ban, and that was kind of like a culture shock, society, societal shock. I never heard that. And then they did it in Kentucky, and I was, I was pissed, you know, as far as the bar situation. Yeah, so I, I believe in Michigan... In some, in some places, at least, the, the places that I'm really talking about are like the backwoods places that you're an hour away from the closest Walmart and nobody's going to care anyways. There's not even cops around. Like, right. What are they going to do? So now because we're talking about smoking, you had to light up? Man. Man. Yeah. And I don't, I don't smoke in my bedroom. I smoke only in my basement or outside. I'm an exception here because I'm tied to this laptop. And I'm having a great time, too, so why not? Um. So... I guess talking about the, the house and, and the room and stuff like that, I saw your post the other day. By the way, I left a review on your behalf. I didn't say your name, but I, I left a review on your behalf. So, and, and I, I post on Facebook. I asked my friends, like, we're, we're doing a recording with Emory today. You know, like, what kind of questions would you guys have? And that was the first one that popped up. Like, what is going on with that, the lease, rental, rent-to-own situation? Yeah, so, I, so I, come I come into this into house, house, I rented it, it for two months, months and I said, you know what, this is my dream house. So they wanted 320000 for it, so I went in one day and I said, well, I'll give you a quarter million. And they said, all right, well, we'll think about it. Two months go by and they call me and they said, hey, we're going to accept your quarter million dollar offer. I said, great. I said, I love this house. And they said, well, to have that offer, you got to put some money down on that to, to retain it. And I said, Okay, what do you need? He goes, you have seventy thousand dollars laid around. I said, come over. Gave it to him in all twenties. I've got the receipts. Everything good. So I go in and I sign my paperwork, and I think this is what they're trying to do. He, I said, man, I'd like to have this paid off within three years. And the realtor guy goes, you think you do that? And I said, well, it's a goal. I said, yeah, I think I could. I would never have signed on that. I would have never put myself on the eight ball. I wouldn't even have done a twenty-year mortgage. So what I was impression, I spent a thirty-year mortgage like everybody else. 
I got the house on like three or four percent. The market was good. And um, I've been paying. I've been around almost eight. And then the other day, I said, what's the payoff amount on this house? I mean, I'm thinking about paying it off, see where I'm at. And they're like, well, the house is worth more now. And I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah I'm yeah, sure it is worth more. I finished the basement. I put in a pool. I put it, I tore down the deck, put up new decks. I painted the entire house. I've done so much to this house. I've sunk 200 grand into this house. But they're acting like, I think they're, the economy's hurting them. And then now they can't find my contract. And so it's, it's kind of like, like, we're like in a standoff so uh, but this is my house i ain't going nowhere i'm really confused about this situation i love the campfire contract you and me both this is a legitimate bank that you got it's the my realtor and i think what they did is they put me on some kind of like lease to own thing which was not was for two hundred fifty thousand. that was the agreed for a quarter million right yeah but who's putting 70 grand on a house that they're Brandon's own, like, I, that was that never, was never, this was never the conversation I'd had, had with them. So, so, I don't know what they're trying to do, but it ain't what we had, we had agreed upon. Uh, the 70 grand brings it up to more of what they were looking for at, over the 300. So, when so I'm, I'm wondering if that's actually where the 70 That goes ran. towards the quarter million, so it had me at like 180 or whatever, and then all okay. I... And you saw the it. paperwork where everything was supposed to line up? We're supposed to line up. I don't know what. Did you see the paperwork? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Okay. Okay. I'm just. I'm. I'm needing all the facts here. This is a wild story. She works in insurance. Yeah. So oh, I I, I pay. I pay. So this day day, that so they're trying to act like they put me in a three year balloon. Then if I was in a three year balloon, why have I paid property taxes and insurance for a decade on a house I don't own? Like it makes no sense. They know what they're doing. They're wrong. And uh, well, you know, we'll put it before a judge at some point. Okay. And it looks really bad. Yeah. So when I when I looked up the names that were in the texts and everything like that, I pulled up. There's like two different companies. One of them looks like it's owned by the woman that you were talking about, or two, and the other one's like her husband or something along those lines. And I looked it up, and pretty much all of the reviews within the last three or four years have been this same thing happening to other people. Oh, yeah. 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 They. Uh, they uh, they're trying to pull a fast one. I think that the economy's got them struggling. So I tried to set up a meeting with them. So we were supposed to meet on this Tuesday and they canceled. They set a new date. So come down to that date, they called me that day and they're like, we're going to cancel this one too. And they never set a new date. And I, they, they're not hearing me. So I made the, I've made the post like two weeks later and I'm like, I am at my wits end. So I make a post, you know, let's put this out in the South of public opinion. And uh, then they call me like, like an hour later. And they're like, Immediately, of course. We're friends. We don't want to do this. Da, da, da. And they're like, take it down. I'm, no, I'm not taking it down. It's, and they they called the police on me. The police called me. The police called me. And I said, why am I talking to you? Have I done something criminal? I said, I've left a bad review. And they're like, uh, no, you haven't done a criminal. We're just making sure. But I'm like, bye. No. Yeah. I. It sucks that when it has to get to that point. But sometimes, you know, people won't take you seriously until you do until it's in front of tens of thousands potentially millions of eyes especially if it goes viral the news picks it up and you know, starts talking about them and they you know they'll, they'll lose their ass on it have any yeah. news yeah. outlets reach out reach out to you for comment no not that i know of all right give it a couple days yeah but i wouldn't do any press do about it or nothing like i've had so much shit, shit. Like in 2016, this liberal rag up in uh, Louisville rescinded my Reader's Choice Award, and like all oh, the press reached out. I took like, one interview. That, and then the Brad's wife thing. Like I turned down pretty much. I, I tried what? to make a big what's a Brad deal. wife? Oh, the Cracker Barrel wife? thing. I don't. I don't know anything about that. Oh, when y'all are no, done, no. Google Brad's wife. I started that. We'll look it up. Well, I was, okay, look, then there it's like two in the morning, and this guy posted a Cracker Barrel, and he's like, "Why'd you fire my wife?" You fired my wife, and I was like, so I just shit posted. I retweeted it on my Facebook. It's followed by like two point two million at the time. I, I reposted it, and I was like, yeah, justice for Brad's wife. I wake up the next day. Good morning, America. People dot com. Like it was everywhere. So now when I go to Cracker Barrel, did she get her job back? Want pictures with me and shit because it's such a paradox, I guess. So but it blew up. Did she get her job back? No, and it turns out Cracker Barrel released a statement and said they fired her for hygiene. Middle back, and I'm like, oh no, they're trying to turn it around and embarrass her. I didn't yep. know even first. 
I, terrible. Yeah, you see that in like every space all the time. As soon as as soon as an employer or a business or whatever figures out that they don't that they don't want you around oh, anymore, low. it doesn't matter if you can the real reason. They'll find another reason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those, oh, yeah. Yep. Um. So, sorry, I'm like losing my train of thought here for a second. Um, do you think that you know you're going to prevail? Do you think this is going to be a pretty cut and dry thing, or do you think you're going to have to be fighting this for a while? And I think I'm. Oh yeah, because oh, yeah, I've raised cause my daughters here. You know, I've been here a decade, and I've sunk a lot of money in this house. And I love this house. You know, I've raised my kids. It's my home. And so I have no choice but to prevail. And, and, you know, I've got all the texts. I've got everything that they've said. Uh, I've recorded audio. And, you know, where they admit that they gave me $250,000, they accepted my $250,000 offer, and they took seventy grand from me. And, you know, what? What's going on? And she even went so far as to say, okay, well, how about this? We're, we're trying to, we were trying to figure out a, a solution. She goes, she goes, I'll just I'll give you the house for a quarter million, but you, you can pay it. I'll give you an indefinite amount of time to pay it off. And I was like, I've given you 70 grand. And now you're wanting me to just reset back to that quarter million. I was like, that's not going to happen. And so it's just one of those things. And I hate it because I don't feel like they're, I, I, I don't hate to sound like this because I always try to give people the benefit of the doubt. And I'm going to sit here and be like, I don't feel like they're like totally evil people, but I didn't mean here I am, you know. It's wild. I, was just reading recently about the uh, woman that had the locks changed on her house because there were squatters in it. So it was like her family home. And she, when she went to list it for sale, her parents had died. She found out there were squatters in it. And so she went in there with like the news and a locksmith and had the locks changed and the police arrested her. Yeah, squatters have these crazy rights. We live in a clown. Yeah. So it's it's easier to remove you from a place that you're paying the bills on than it is to remove somebody who's not paying the bills. So there you go. I think we figured it out for you. Stop paying. <laughs> yeah, just squat. Yeah. Fucking crazy. So the law here in North Carolina, uh, our our old house was vacant for a while, and there was a light left on, and we had thought we had seen it turn off and on a couple times. So I thought maybe somebody was in there. I looked it up in North Carolina. You have to be in there for like two years without anybody noticing. And I was like, that's, it's basically impossible. North Carolina is pretty strict about the squatter thing. If you're not in there for, you have to be in there. You have to have your mail delivered there, your packages. You have to, the neighbors have to kind of acknowledge you're there. So you have to be doing just enough so that it looks normal, but also, not that they call up the person that they think owns the house and be like, hey, who's in your house right now? Well, it's see, it's, it's like if it's the, like girl, the girl, girl, like the girl, girl, it could be anybody. But I had this, I had this one point, point, I had this crazy ass chick had come had over for a weekend. Uh, then not at this not house. This is back when I just had my oldest daughter. I just had one kid. And she came over and spent the weekend and had her little duffel bag and her toothbrush was a big key thing. And comes like Sundays, like she wouldn't want, she didn't want to leave. She had her little kid there. She did not like smoking in the house and all that. So I'll get into that. So uh, I ended up having to call the police and they came and I'm like, you got to get her out of my house. It's crazy. And he said, she has her stuff here. It's like, she's here. You know, all it takes is a toothbrush. And I was like, what? And so I was like, how do I get rid of this chick? How do I get rid of this chick? So I called all my buddies over to have a poker game. So I'm like, I fired up a cigarette. I'm like, we're going to smoke cigars. And she was so... Uh, uh, so of a hovering mother, mother like crunchy mom. mom and so she booked, she booked it before it. we could smoke around her, around her kid you know what you did i guess kid, but uh, uh that's why that's, that's how i had to do it I have a poker game that's, is that how you got rid of all your ex-girlfriends no they just <laughs> left they're like fuck this guy we don't like him anymore okay. <laughs> um yeah that's i think i think in north carolina you have to have your mail delivered there at the minimum you already said that no no we were talking about like for squatting, but I'm talking about establishing residence. Like if you were, if you let somebody live in your house for a period of time, like you, you're still living here, you're just leasing, subletting, renting, whatever room, or just letting them crash on your couch, whatever. Once they start having mail delivered, they are now a resident and you have to go through formal eviction procedures. They should make it where you have to have a bill in your name. That would make so much more sense to me. Yeah. It's a little bit more comprehensive. Yeah. Paying a utility? Okay. Yeah, you're probably... Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. If you're actually you're contributing. contributing rather than being a leech. Yeah. Yeah, nailed it. Nailed it. What um shift shift gears here again real quick. Who do you think are I don't know, your Mount Rushmore of content creators? Maybe old and new, mix of both or one of each? Oh, uh, well, definitely, well, definitely Tom. Hey, hey, if we're talking about we're talking internet, like content, or we we're talking about like comedians from the eighties? Yeah, and I stuff. mean, just just anything. Obviously, it doesn't all translate across the decades. So, oh, um, Andrew Dice Clay, Tom May, um, uh, man, I, I've been getting into Matt Rife lately. He's he gotta be up there. He's too quick on his feet. And for a fourth person, oh, that's tough. You know, um. Me? No, I'm kidding. Uh, oh, who would the fourth be? You're killing me. I got to have a fourth on here. Um, oh, man. I don't know. No, thank God. We can come back to it. I'm sure okay. something will jump out. So too. it sounds like you prefer edgy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I like everything to toe the line. You know, I would say Louis C.K. or Bill Burr, but I'm kind of listening to him so much. I guess Bill Burr. He's over. Yeah, he's over. He's so I'm uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of a mix on it. I go through these ebbs and flows where I really like the more nuanced stuff, where it's like only a small group of people will understand this stuff, and that's why I think it's funny because I'm like I understand what it's the the Captain America thing. I understood that reference. The esoteric oh, stuff, yeah. yeah. And then uh, there's other times where I'm just like that. Three second long video is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. So there's, I, you know, I, once I, I don't find, watch YouTube, so I don't. No, not not just YouTube. Anything I'm, to contribute? I'm talking about it all. Like Martin Lawrence was my favorite actor, comedic actor growing up. I watched Blue Streak so many times. Blue Streak's good. I can recite the entire movie. I could I could go and recreate that movie myself without having a script in hand. I just wouldn't have the scenes and stuff like that. But um Dave Chappelle's hilarious. Dave Chappelle's um, great. Is he even doing anything anymore? Some I think he has, he's done a couple of Netflix stand up specials in the past two years, I think. I think he's done a couple. Yeah, he's he's one of those guys where I wish that he was in, you know, more feature movies like as the the comedic relief or whatever, because he's just so He's so goofy, but it's hilarious. He's so funny. I don't think he's done a whole lot since days of confused. I could be wrong. Maybe he's done one or two things, but, but uh, man, there was a movie that somebody posted about the other day, and I was like, oh my God, that's Dave Chappelle. It's a movie from like early 90s, I think. Oh, no, no. Robin Hood Men in Tights. He was one of the, uh, you know, the old Robin Hood hat. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Chappelle was in that. And I was like, what the fuck? I watched it so much when I was like, damn it, no idea. I, I've had that happen before. We've gone back and shown the kids a movie from you know when we grew up. Or I guess I should say I've shown the kids a movie from when we grew up. I'm uncultured. <laughs> and uh, I'll be like, oh my God, that's so-and-so. That's the person that's in this new, you know, and because there was a gap a lot of the time in their acting career, they were famous when we were little and then they took a break or did something else or whatever, and then they came back. You know, a lot of people that were in movies when we were younger now do you know, shows on Amazon or Apple or whatever. You know, they're not or produced. Not on produced. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's kind of cool seeing some of them because you're like, oh man. And then you you start looking at their IMDb or whatever, and you're like, they were in that too. I got to watch that again. I forgot about that movie or I forgot about that show. And it happens all the we get we get sucked into that. Uh, Whole rabbit hole every couple months or so, where we get hooked on like one actor. I made her watch some of the goofiest Colin Farrell movies a couple months ago. Colin Farrell, what was he in that was goofy? Uh, the Lobster. It was lobster. terrible. Do not waste <laughs> your time. It was the worst movie ever, and he fucking loves it because I, it was so terrible. It was so bad, it but it's so bad. funny. Um, what was the uh, what was the the Area Fifty One? With uh, Scarlett Johansson and Astro City, <laughs> something like Asteroid City, something like that. There was a, it was like a Netflix movie or Amazon movie that came out like a year or so ago. Worst movie ever. It's so dull, but it's so 
Fuck Again, you. don't Money. waste your time. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I like Remember Cast Away. It's one of my favorite movies. And people said, oh, they're... It goes like 30 minutes, there's not a word said, or it's boring, or whatever. It's one of my favorite movies, Castaway. Yeah, there's something to be said about being able to capture people's attention without yeah, actually yeah. being dialogue. Yeah, <laughs> I, I grew up in one of those silent movies. I, I watched a lot of Buster Keaton growing up, Charlie Chaplin. And crazy that I could just sit there and be so entertained. I'm not aware of a spoken, you know. I was watching a Corridor Crew video yesterday or Saturday, one of the two. And they were breaking down a special effects scene from like 1912. It was a flood in like this Western town at Danbury. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, you know, silent film because they don't have audio or anything like that back then. And they were breaking down how complex and how difficult it would have had to have been to build these miniature sets. And it looks, if, if you watch the clip without it being remastered or anything like that, you're like, there's no way that was 110 years ago. There's absolutely no fucking way. And they, sure enough, but if, again, today you have behind the scenes footage where they're like, this is how we achieve this shot and how we yeah. get the special effects. You don't have that from back then. You just have the finished product. Right. So you have right. to speculate and figure out stuff. And they're like, yeah, they had to go through and take the actual film. And they actually had to carve stuff out and paste it on this other thing. Could you imagine? Creative. Yeah. I think CG and, and green screens are kind of like AI nowadays, where it's like it's kind of taken yeah. away from the real and creativity. Hey, look at Buster Keaton's stunts he used to do. It's mind blowing, and it's like it's really dangerous too. The shit he was doing, but it's mind blowing. And he, he was like you know the the old school first Jackie Chan, I guess you could say. So yeah. I think that I think that movies. I was just thinking about the other day. I was like, man, since old school or the other guys or even super bad. I was like, when's the last time? There was really, really a good, good, great comedy. And I, I think that I think the films are just getting worse and worse. Vince Vaughn actually was in an interview a couple of weeks ago or months ago now at this point saying exactly the same thing of what made him famous. He wouldn't be allowed to make anymore. Yeah. The Walt culture has canceled that. Yeah, it's a mess. What was, um, what was the, the movie with the kids? Good, good Boys? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. See, yeah I thought so that was okay. I, I, I liked it, but I was like, uh, it was so kind of cliche to me, just pushing the kids to the raunchiness. And it was like, I don't know, it seemed like a lot of low-hanging fruit, but I did hate it. But it definitely wasn't like old school, super bad, other guys, you know, or Tropic Thunder. Yeah. Oh, Tropic Thunder. Yeah, and I know that, uh, Ben Stiller's commented a lot about it. That can yeah. never be made today, and I'm just like, yeah. There's, I, I think, I, well, I think realistically, the only thing that couldn't happen is Robert Downey Jr. couldn't play the character that he played. That oh, be I, the I, thing I, that people would get offended about. Well, and the another thing they were offended about because they brought up were Simple Jack, where he's like, I got a good brain. It's like, dude, you know, like, yeah. everybody calm the fuck down. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I, I think, I think we are kind of seeing a swing. Going back to it, there's still you know, an outspoken crowd that hates it, but I think people are so burned out with DC and Marvel, and that's like in Star Wars, and those are like the only real you know, continuous production games that when something new comes up, people are like, "I'm just gonna try it because I don't want to go to this other thing. I don't want to. I don't want to go watch the Marvels or whatever. I want to want to just go to the theater and or yet another Disney remake of." an original yeah. classic just leave it alone yeah yeah so I, I i think there are people that are now realizing okay the movie's not going to hurt me they might make fun of people like me but it's not going to reach out and touch me and and, and cause me any harm right so probably go through it well talking so about talking the robert about downey robert jr thing look at uh white chicks and yeah. it's like god no one was no ashamed one. of it. It's like, you know, they're being the stereotypical, hey, you know, and all this valley girl shit. And it's like, dude, that's, that's fucking hilarious. I, I laugh I the laugh hardest hard. when I laugh at myself. When that's I what Terry Crews is known girl. for. Apparently people come up and start singing that song. Like, way downtown to him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, he, he will burst out singing with them as well. See, my, my go-to for Terry Crews, and I mean, I love Brooklyn Nine-Nine, but my go-to is always uh, Cheeseburger Eddie. For what? What's that? The longest yard. When he's doing the robot, calling uh, I forgot about that. Calling him a baby back bitch. (laughs) 
Yep. That was that was one of my favorites. I I I recite his stuff all the time. He snatches the burger back away from Adam Sandler. Shit's funny. I've never um, seen. It. What was that? I've never seen, I've never it. seen it. Really? Okay, that one I will say you can watch. It is. Worth is that the one with Nelly in it? Yeah, he's the running back in it. Oh, I think I did. I think see I did. It. Yeah, I mean that came out like oh five, something like that. You guys are definitely like that earlier. Oh two four. Eight. Yeah. Oh three, maybe. I've never seen the original though, but uh, wasn't it? That was Reynolds? Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah, I never yeah, he seen he's in the, he's in the remake, but not as himself because that's who Adam Sandler's playing. But yeah, so what would you attribute your like your humor the where you get your inspiration from? Would you say you know it's from the bad experiences, or do you think you've always just been a funny guy and you just never had an opportunity? No, it's no, a defense it's a mechanism. mechanism. Growing, Growing up in boys' up, homes, and I went to some really, really rough schools, man. Uh, I lived in I some lived really rough really neighborhoods. I lived in a project for a while, and it was a defense mechanism. All my friends are dead. I got a few doing natural life. I got a friend on death row. I got friends uh, that have had RICO conspiracies. I was never like a gangster gangster, but when I was around these people, I was the crazy white boy. So uh, I would do fire marshal bill. I'm like, well, let me tell you something. They would eat it up. And I was kind of like the Jim Carrey. And um, so uh, one of the things I would do is I these, these gangsters, man, these black dudes, are, you know, and Terrace Martin, you know, Kenny Parker, these are real gangsters. And, uh, and But I would, uh, I would uh, you know, go up to him like, Larry, let me tell you something. I was down in accounting the other day and Deborah from HR says that you're uh, doing really good with your reports. Like, and, and they would just be like, you know, I'd be like, well, I'll see you on the ninth green. And they used to eat it up. And, and I dealt with so many emotions and abandonment and, and hurt internally. So even to this day, man, like, you know, if one of my friends died, I'd be like, oh, well, his wife's single now because I hurt. And that's my way of dealing with it i mean i went to my dad's funeral and we had just started repealing our relationship and the day i went viral with the silver radio like that that week he died he was my biggest fan and at his funeral i put i put the fun in funeral and it's just it's like my way to oh yeah i tweeted that it was just my way to cope with shit so it's really just um it keeps me from i guess being kind of a coward or uh or having to deal with the emotions or maybe it makes me more of a coward to say i don't want to deal I don't want to cry and I don't want to hurt, so I'm going to laugh it off. So I think internally, I probably, probably it doesn't make you a coward. You're trying well, to, I feel like a big stick of What was that? I I have a big stick of dynamite just like internalized. I don't know. It's just, did you see that um, clip that was going around like last week? The stand up comedian, somebody in the front row or close to the front row had a seizure. Her. Yeah, that yeah, was Chris Delia. I, I, I tweeted that, and I said, "Because here's the thing, Chris Delia. I don't know this, but he was on a. He was. I was in touch with the family where he reached out to this girl. Took a picture at his um, show years ago, and he ended up inboxing her, and she was 16. And he was like, "Well, you know, whatever. I got in touch with that family, and they verified everything. So, so one day he's on a podcast." And they're like, uh, yeah, they were talking and they're like, hey, you can go look at the clip. It's, he's a deer in the headlights. And they go, yeah, Snapchat. So they got all this stuff from Snapchat to prove that this guy did this stuff. He goes, wait, 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 what? Snapchat? He goes, it disappears. And they go, no, you can screenshot it. And he goes, oh, shit. And you can see. So I, I think he's a groomer. And so the other day, he, he we, we ran him off of Twitter. The last... Uh, thing he tweeted was this little baby and he's like oh i love this little baby he called his fans his babies but he's like i love this little baby and i said yeah you probably want to get with him you know what i mean we ran him off twitter yeah I, I, i'm a high five dogs right so we ran him off of twitter and that's why i retweeted him the other day and i said oh look who's back after we ran him off and and i said um surprise the replies so he's got it where you can tweet at. so i saw it from you then because i remember seeing that so have you seen this no i've no idea so the, there's a guy in the crowd that had a seizure and fell over and they had to carry him out. And he's talking shit about the guy having a seizure. Somebody's like, too soon. He's like, what do you mean too soon? It just fucking happened here on my show. I could talk about it. Like, yeah, I think, I think Chris Taylor is kind of a funny guy, but personally, 100% think he's, remember, you got to look up that video of him, say Chris Taylor, Snapchat podcast. And you see him go, oh, well, he knows he was Snapchatting with matters. And yeah, that's out there. there. He, he knows that it's on record now. You can see it. It's crazy. How long ago? 
Uh, probably 2018, maybe. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch of stuff on Reddit about it. Actually, his Snapchat still exists. It's the third... Of course it does. First, yeah. uh, you, got, you got videos from YouTube, and then Reddit, and then Snapchat, and it's his Christy Elia. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Not going to click on that. Yeah, please. Well, you're too old. You're too old. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, yeah. You never know. He could be uh, like uh, Tom Cruise. He might just have an upper limit, and then he just resets and goes back no. down to the bottom. No, no. Leonardo, Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. DiCaprio. Yeah. Leonardo. Wrong famous guy. They're all the same. I mean, they're <laughs> all rich. They all only work in certain movies. His latest girlfriend is 19. Um, what is the oldest one that he started dating? Is the question that I would ask. I don't know. Well, I would say he cut them off at twenty five. My youngest daughter's so, mother. So she reached out to me on Tinder. She was twenty one at the time. I'm like, oh god, one. And I'm like, we can be physical, but I could, but never, I could like, never like date you. I was like, I just, I, it, it just, it. You know, I don't mind being I don't physical. Mind being You're an adult. Out for this country, you smoke, you drink. Okay, we can be physical. So, but I, I just didn't want to do the dating thing. And after about after six about months, months, man, you know, of just being physical, you know, booty calling here and there, whatever, I, I just kind of fell for her. She's 23 now, but, 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 but I, that was never in the cards for me. And it wasn't like a pattern, like Leonardo DiCaprio, but, and sometimes like, we, we, she was going into a store and I yelled, I said, Hey, 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 or something from the car. I needed something. And a black dude walked out and he goes, Hey, your dad's yelling for you. He's just like, so, you know, there's that. And that's the only time that you've ever been mistaken as dad? Oh, no, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's plenty more, but the only time I'm aware, aware of what like, I saw. But no, I guarantee we walk through places, and you know, if I have my arm around her, she holds my hand, it's like, what? what? That's her grandfather. You know? Yeah, I can only imagine what's going through people's minds. And that's why I said I didn't want to date somebody yeah. so much younger than me. But once you love somebody, you know, love doesn't love the horse. So there's, there's two things to break down there. When you're a guy... And somebody's like, oh, it's your daughter or whatever. You're like, because you don't want to be that predator. But <laughs> women, if they get called the sister or sibling or whatever of the, the oh, your, your sister is so pretty. And, you know, she would be flattered. She'd be happy to be yeah, yeah. considered younger. Whereas a dude's like, oh, like, get away from you. Can't be here. Yeah. Because there's this. Right. No, I disagree. You would rather be called mom than the sister. Your big sister's looking for you. Of my children? Yeah. If somebody oh, that's didn't fucking know. weird. <laughs> okay. I get what she's I saying. What I get what he's saying, too. Yeah. I, uh, so, so weird. Anyway. If, uh, if you had to pick just like a, a handful, doesn't have to be a specific number, content creators and those are the only people that anybody on the internet would be allowed to see who would they be it, do, well, it doesn't even need to be specifically the internet it could be any form of media i guess it kind of takes me back to the whole i'm consuming kind of thing um don't know i, I and it's also a double-edged sword because i just want people to see it all and i get what you're saying like who who would i do people's focus towards and I just, I don't know. It's, I don't, I don't watch a whole lot of people. I just don't. Yeah. I, we talked about, um, the, the passing of, uh, uh, Paul, of course I'm blanking on his name now, Paul Harrell. The uh, gun guy. Yeah. And I never really consumed his content until there was the big push back in like January to get him to him because he was, you know, it's last year and then he was really close in like November, December to get a million subscribers on YouTube. And there was a big push in January and I did not know who he was until that push happened. And I subscribed to him and I didn't really consume any of his content. I mean, I still am subscribed to him. I was then still am now. And in retrospect, I look back at him like, man, I really wish I would have caught on to him earlier, even before he was diagnosed, because that is content that I do like. Mm -hmm. But again, it's so hard for me to find something. And it also is one of those things where you get 
as a as a consumer, you get stabbed in the back a lot by these weirdos. Like, uh, what's the guy, uh, the video game player guy that everybody's dragged? Doctor right Yeah. Yeah. You end up like that, or like uh, Mr. Beast now. You know, without all the stuff going on, people, you know, you find out this stuff years down the road, and you're like, man, I, you know, I supported him. I, you know, liked his content. I shared it. I commented, and then you see this stuff come out, and you're like, really? Well, I, might, I, might, I might get cooked for this, but when I saw that going around, I didn't know who the guy was, and they were like, subscribe to me, trying to get a million, and I, I did not. And um, because for one, I was sympathetic towards him, absolutely, but it's not content that I would want to see. And I know I sound, I know I sound like an ass out here, but I knew he was going to get a million subs. He didn't need my help, but it was just I, I wasn't going to do it out of like pity, you know, to right. sub to somebody or something like that. So I just felt wrong if I did, and I did. I considered it, and I was like, ah, right, you know, he's going to get it anyway. Just wait, keep it pushing. So, but I, that is not my content either. I don't, I don't care about gun videos and i'm a i'm two a guy you know i can't own a gun i'm a selling but uh it just didn't appeal to me and i just didn't want to do it out of bed you just didn't feel it. and and it, nobody's wrong if they did sub to i'm not saying that just me personally it just you know i'd rather have my my sub burned or, or geared to me yeah so, but i'm glad he got it. awesome i seen him with the gold button yeah 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 that was that was uh you know the the meme where the the woman's like you didn't cry during the Titanic. Do men even have feelings? And that's one of those feel good ones where you see that picture and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know awesome. you got Yeah. Um, how's, how's the, the new YouTube channel? Cause I know you did a push two or three weeks ago, uh, content stuff. Um, yeah, I haven't really promoted, I think, but one time and it's at 1,454 subs. I think that's pretty cool. I, I, sometimes people meet me and they're like, oh man. And I got a YouTube. Got a YouTube. I'll tell you one. I was I shooting was, a video, video with Tom made that, Tom that music made that. video, and this mm -hmm. guy is filming. His name's Evan Rose. Evan Rose. You might have heard of Evan Era Evan TV. TV. So, so he comes up to me after the yeah. shoot, and he goes, man, can I get a picture with you? And I said, yeah, of course. And he goes, uh, I'm a YouTuber, too. I'm up and coming. He goes, I only have like 600 subs right now. I said, dude, that, that's a lot of fucking people. You filled up a, a pretty big stage there if people want to see your content. And I said, you know, remember, we all started with zero subs, zero likes, zero comments, zero views. And I was like, you know, stick with it. That guy has like six, seven million subscribers now. He gets, he broke a million in like a year and a half. I called him like at four in the morning. I'm in my basement because I got his number at the top. I called him. It was like two, maybe two in the morning. I woke him up and I was like, I'm just fucking blown away. I said, you remember when you talked to me at the thing? Look at you now. And now he's like one of the biggest creators. I was uh, down on my, when I had my boats, I was down on my boat and I asked these kids one time and we were this neighbor boat of mine. They had these two signs of 10 and 12. And I was like, well, who's your favorite YouTuber? And they're like, Evan Era TV. And I'm like, you know, I called him up and I was like, Man, you look cool, bro. And like, you know, so, uh, so, so I guess what I'm getting at is the whole thousand subs. Sometimes people are like, oh, I only have a thousand. Or so, what the fuck do you mean you only have a thousand? Or even if you said I only have a hundred, look at that. You're filling up a whole apple pie. Serious? That's great. So, you know, yeah, you, we, you got look We had some really good stats in May and June, and I had taken a screenshot of it and I posted it, and you were like, dude, that's you're doing fucking numbers, dude. That's awesome. We had, we, over like that forty-eight hour period that I had taken a screenshot from, we had over eight. Oh, on Twitter. Oh, Twitter. Yeah. yeah, yeah, dude, you were fucking killing it. Yeah, we're we don't do as well right now, but I'm also we're still doing so many little micro experiments, and I'm trying not to change too many things at once, and we keep running into issues with getting our content getting flagged on YouTube for no reason. Fortunately, on the IT side of things, I'm a Google Cloud partner. So for cloud infrastructure and stuff like that, I'm a partner. So I have people at Google that I can email. The problem is the companies, even though they have the same parent company, they don't like interact with each other at all. So I can email my GCP rep and be like, hey, I'm having this issue. And she's like, sorry, <laughs> can't really help you. So I've been developing a relationship with this uh, uh, partner uh, advertiser, whatever partner person on YouTube the last couple of weeks. And now I'm to the point where I just email. I'm like, dude, it happened again. He's like, all right, I'll get it cleared. But it's it's but a once it's flagged, it's basically suppressed. Yeah, because that you know, they they say there's nothing that says the first hour or the first day influences it, but it does because when people look and they see your video is uploaded 
12, 24, 48 hours ago, and it has three views, they're just going to scroll right by it because it only has three views. If nobody what? else wanted to watch it, why would I want to watch it? Here's the, here's the thing. So Facebook banned me at 2.2 million followers. Oh, wow. I've I done hundreds of millions of views on Facebook. So they banned me. And I'm like, okay, kick me out of the bar. I'm not going to sit outside the bar. I'm like, please let me in. I'll go to another bar. I do have another Facebook. It's some admin runs it. I don't touch it. It's, it did 80,000 followers in like the first month. I don't, I don't even collect the money from it. It's in my buddy's name, but it's just there. But personally, don't fuck with Facebook. So I get on TikTok. I go to TikTok. I get 2.2 million followers or whatever. They ban me. I start a new one. I'm at 1.1 million followers. They ban me. I start another one. I got to like 650 and they ban me again. Okay, I'm, I'm out of your bar. So I've never made another TikTok. I think some other fans or admins have. So I'm done with TikTok. So, so now with now YouTube, with I scrapped my YouTube, YouTube and I debated going back because they I went from 10 grand a month to 50 bucks a month where they deplatformed me, demonetized me. And so I made a new one, but I don't take it serious. So I'm predominantly on X because even though I get some shadow bands over there and run into Little Flag, it's the place where I can express myself the most. And they haven't picked me. Well, I was permanently suspended. Then Elon brought me back the um, uh, limits or whatever, blanket shit. But... um. But I'm going to go towards the platform. the platform. So next, I want to try Kick. I'm going to try. I've done Twitter before, and so I'm going to try Kick and Rumble and try those out. But I'm going to keep gravitating towards the platforms that are not censure me, that are not demonetize me, that, that want me to be fucking be there. So I'm not going to go. I want to go to Cheers. I don't want to go to the bar that keeps kicking me the fuck out. Right. That's kind of where I, I think that us as the consumer's market, I think that a lot of people, you know, it, if they are personally pushed away from a certain site, say, hey, you know, you're not the only fucking platform. Boom. And eventually, you know, those things will be a sea of shit. Just the way yeah. I look at it. I, uh, I think Rumble is actually a pretty good option. I don't, it's, it's kind of clunky and it's kind of, it kind of sucks. But as far as view count and things like that, anytime we have a poor performing episode on YouTube, it does numbers on Rumble. It's weird. But if we have a well performing video on YouTube, it does like three views on Rumble. It's, so it's almost like we're hitting both like two different demographics. Mm -hmm. The people that like it a lot on YouTube aren't on Rumble and the people that like it a lot on Rumble aren't on YouTube. So having kind of that two, you know, double fronted attack on it has worked well for us. It was actually, we were monetized on Rumble before we were monetized on YouTube. Yeah, the cool yeah, thing, the, cool thing, the platforms, I, I tell people too, I'm like, what, what does good on Instagram, probably ain't going to do good on Twitter. What does good on Twitter is probably not going to do good on Instagram. And it kind of, there's, there's certain people on Instagram, there's certain people on TikTok, you know, there's certain people on YouTube and Twitter. But, um, yeah, I just, dude, it, it, I've been beaten up. I'm banned from PayPal, I'm banned from Best Buy, I'm banned from, I can't go to Apple. How did you get banned from Best Buy? What is your... <laughs> I bought a laptop, a laptop from there. I paid like paid three like grand. grand. And they said, do you want you this want extra it? coverage for like 500 bucks? And I was like, what does that cover? Like, break it, break it, whatever. They said, they give you another, give you another one. And so I said, no matter what, you know, whatever. They're like, yeah, they said, you come in, we'll give you a brand new one. We'll take this one, refurb it out the door, whatever. So it ends up falling out of my SUV and shatters in my garage. Well, the screen broke in my garage. I take it to Best Buy. I'm like, hey, I paid for the coverage and da 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 da. And they're like, they're like, nah, they're like, they're we'll like, give you like a thousand dollars store. They were something. They were fucking me. I, I, and I hate that. And you know, I rarely, rarely like push my weight around. I'm not the small guy, and I, I know that this happens to small people that don't have a platform or a soapbox. To say you're not gonna fucking run. I ended up going live in the store, and I said, I don't want this laptop. I said they're giving me like a thousand dollars store credit, and I said, who wants a free laptop? Who wants a free laptop? found this found little girl and her mom and the little girl was going to be homeschooled she's probably like 12 she was they were looking for her laptop and they're the best by people were like get out of the store please get out of the store please get out of the store and i said i'll leave if you give them my store credit and they did and the woman caught me at the front she's like thank you thank you thank you please show it up and i'm up in my car and i leave but she ended up getting me up on, yeah they ended, that mom ended up hitting me up like two weeks later on facebook found out who i was because i don't like oh, you know what? She found out who I was I and thanked me. And she was like, you know, that meant so much. But but my whole thing was before I argue over something or spend energy, it's like, fuck it. 
you know, so here, just, here, just take the shit. So they got a laptop. They got a laptop. Is but I'm not why you're using your daughter's laptop. <laughs> yeah. I was so, curious about that. So coincidentally, I went to Best Buy and I almost I basically never go to Best Buy. I've been there more times this year than I have since I've lived in North Carolina, which is You've over also eight been years. buying a lot of equipment this year, yeah. so it makes sense. But I, I went there specifically looking convenience tax, right? Go there, be, it's more expensive. I can get it on Amazon, but I could get it now. Yeah. I walk yeah. into Best Buy. I walked in there. It was overpriced. I was just looking for uh, a couple new cables because my uh, crimpers had broken. And when I walked out, there was somebody being arrested out in the parking lot. And so hearing you say that, I was like, but I know he wasn't here in town. He wasn't in Wilmington, <laughs> but it could have been. That's probably must have a lot of problems. <laughs> they have to <laughs> just, you know, assholes like me. Like, uh, I hate it for him. <laughs> yeah. I, well, she'll tell you and she'll tell anyone. I, uh, I'll make a big deal about anything, anywhere, anytime to be the asshole, but because I don't like being taken advantage of and I won't stand for other people being taken advantage of. But he makes it uncomfortable. Whereas you didn't make it uncomfortable. You were saying, give it to this other person. I just wanted to be like, fuck you, fuck you, blah, 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 blah. Hey, if, if you do it to them once. They're going to consider it the next time. This guy, okay, we got him to leave, whatever, or we banned him from our social media, or whatever the case may be. But the next guy might be worse. Yeah. So, yeah. It, well, it I think makes- I, a little gunshot where I've been to prison. I'm like, I don't want to push it too much because I don't want to have to click Trump up something on me. So I'm like, hey, you know, let's just get this over. And I'm, I, I'm thinking I'm a fairly level headed guy. Might not have used to been, but I definitely am now. I just, you know. You get and more. You said you got out that. when you were twenty-one. How long ago was that? Uh, two thousand and one. And you said you're you're pro two A. So, <laughs> have you ever considered trying to go down the path of getting it expunged? Isn't it past the ten year mark if you're on good behavior? Or no? No, no. I'm a violent offender. I I was oh, okay, released. Sorry. Go to violent offender class. No, it's okay. So but, if it's uh, nonviolent, then you would be eligible. If it's nonviolent, I think you have more of a chance to get a gubernatorial part and are getting some kind of clemency or whatever, you know, gotcha. okay. Uh, okay. or fundamental fairness, but they're not going to do it for me. So I did, I, when I was big on Facebook, I, I did a White House uh, petition when Trump was in office. And I, I think you need 100,000 signatures and they, they have to address it. Okay. So I started it, and but I live by this, I'm Irish Catholic, so I live by this creed where it's God's will be done. And I got like I got half like of the half signatures. I didn't get the other half. Just wasn't meant wasn't to, be, meant to be. be. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I can't I protect can't my daughter. So do with that information what anybody wants to do. But okay. We had a saying in prison when it comes to shanks. And it was like, I'd rather get caught with one than without one. So. Well, that actually leads me to my last question. What legacy do you want to leave your five daughters? Um. And I, I tell them all the time, or I even ask them, but I try to tell them, I say, you know, I'm not going to. And they're like, duh, duh. they hate them. But I tell them, I say, or I ask them, I say, hey, am I a good dad? You know, if, I, if I've been a great dad, they're like, yeah, dad, you're great. You know, so I guess what I just want to be, I, I don't want to be good comedian or, you know, influential or a good political pundit, whatever, or a creative writer, none of that. None of that. I just fuck all of them. I just want to be a good man. I just want them to know, man. I, I, I think, you know, when I pass, I just want them to say, remember when dad said he wasn't going to be here forever? Damn. You know, I want them to, I told them they're not allowed to warn me. I said, don't cry. I, you know, if you go look at my Twitter bio, there's an extended bio. I've written out my last, last one testament. No one knows this. I think only like one person found it and they laughed or whatever, but it's got all my words. And um, I just want them to say, man, you know, dad was really good to us. He was fun and he was good to us. And that really strikes me, and I have said essentially the same thing to him, and he told me that wasn't good enough. That's not what I said. Yes. No. Well, as a being parent, a good mom, it, it's being all, a good mom is all. Yeah. I strive. All that matters. On a daily basis, and I actually said something very similar to my children as well. They were not allowed to cry at my funeral, and I wanted them to play all of the happy songs. Yeah. And just have a dance party. I left a song listed. Uh, uh, 
That's the thing for every daughter. I got a certain special song with, but I told him, I said, don't. Oh, no. You froze. Did the battery die? I don't know. It says. Oh, no. No, we're still, we're still going. I don't know if you can hear us or not. You, you froze there. I'll wait for the text message. Oh, oh and he's back. Got you back. It came yeah. Out, uh, don't cry, and then froze. So we oh yeah. I, well, after I told that. him I said, I said, pick up, pick up with your life, sell my shit, get the fuck over it, and, and get on with your life. Get the fuck over it. <laughs> my son. Dang. We just what got happened? working again. Oh man. All right. Well, I'm glad I get to ask him my final question. Well, Y'all can hear me, right? Okay. Well, well I'm gonna I'm gonna give him a second to come back on before we close it out. Hello. But I'm. Was that so? We're at an hour and forty five. So there's a good chance that we're definitely breaking oh, this into two. You I can't, can't, can't break it into two. You hear me? Are you there? You hear me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. phew. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We. Uh, she was like, "At least I got to ask my final question." I was like, "I didn't." <laughs> I can hear y'all. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, uh, you went. You went all the way out for for that last. That it last kicked me, and it said, uh, no. "Kick for insufficient memory." So, so I guess that is it. Uh, and square that uh, piece of the podcast so off. Uh, oh yeah, well, you better, ed- editing, you better ask your final question then. Editing it will probably be an adventure. This will be the first time that I edit it. This, fortunately, I don't do a whole lot with the editing. I just throw our overlays and yeah, he doesn't edit any of our videos. I mean, I kind of do. E- editing's a edit bitch. It. I'm edited it out. I'm edited it out. Yeah, I get. I'm. Uh, we're at that point where. I want us to land a couple sponsors so I can pay somebody to do it because yes. I want to finally just be able to come onto the set with our topics or our guests or whatever, do our talking heads thing and walk away and give it to somebody else to do. You say talking heads thing? Yeah. I'm just thinking maybe I can like a bobblehead and whatever. That could, be our next, that could be our next product. You could be a bobblehead. Yeah. That, that's yeah, one, that's of one of my reasons when I was talking about I'm burnt out earlier, earlier is if I had somebody else to add it. Yeah. I've edited I've every single every thing I've ever done. I've scored the little music on Sony Acid, Acid and all that and stuff, and I'm, I'm over it. And if I had if somebody I had say, okay, I'll edit, edit, and I knew they could edit and do a good job, because when I edit, I edit if you saw like the raw video, video, you know this, it. it's shit. So yeah. editing is turning shit into sugar. So the Silverado video, uncut, was stupid. I edited it a certain way, and it made it funny. If I can find somebody that's like, hey, I'll edit for you, and I can you know meet these standards, then I'm not burnt out all of a sudden, but editing is 90% of the reason I'm burnt out. I was fucking so sick of editing. But it's impossible to find a clone of yourself. So how I would edit something is different than how he would edit something because what I want to do is not what he wants to do so, and vice versa. When I was working at, at DJM, one of the things that I, and I mean, I knew some of those guys beforehand, so I knew some of their work. So I guess maybe it's different, but, um, the creative people are just fucking creative. And if you if they ask you for guidance, you can give them kind of guardrails, but don't really you know, be too specific if you don't have to be. And usually they'll turn around something that you couldn't even imagine yourself. Yeah. And a lot of times, because I'm not a very creative person, I'm a technical person. I can put things together. Whereas I am a creative person, yeah. not a technical person. So I can, you know, I can give somebody the content and say, hey, Make this look good. Mm-hmm. And that would be my only guidance, other than maybe there might be some notes like, hey, make sure this part's highlighted or whatever. But if I say, hey, make this look good, and they send me one version, I'm like, eh. well, what see what she was I'll, saying, I'll, where she's like, you, it's hard to find somebody that's up to the standard. standard. Like, if like, you want something done right, you got to do it yourself. And this is some, I, I might have mentioned might once or twice. twice. I, I hate being in my fucking videos. videos. I hate the no, silver rail. So. I want to write, and, and, but I know I'm not going to. Get somebody unless I have like Martin Lawrence or Eddie Murphy that's going to deliver it the way that I want it delivered. And like, so I really do hate being in my video. Or what? So I said, or Matt Reif, apparently. Oh, yeah. He's funny. I wonder, I wonder if, uh, if you, this might be kind of convoluted, but I wonder if there's like a, a a subreddit where you could just periodically sprinkle in scripts and, and see what people make of it, not really tell them who you are. And then wait until after and say, hey, I've been writing that and come out and say, I am ghostwriter, whoever on Reddit. Well, I've got, I got 
I've got some I've got burner, burner accounts. I had one, and it was a female. female. I've always wanted to ghost write for a female, so I created oh, this great. female. And like the other Is day, that I made why the, the laser again. storm says she, her. Yeah, yeah, but I yeah, ghost I wrote for this. I made this liberal woman, and the other day, her viral again. I'm like, that was it. Didn't last it didn't three last. weeks, but like that was my Twitter account. I was pretending to be this liberal woman. I would say the most landish shit. And one of the things I said was, because this is kind of how liberals will talk. And they're so condescending. But I said, uh, the tweet was, um, if you use big words around black people, you're racist. Because they didn't have the same education as you. So if you uh, speak like a thesaurus, you're racist. It was a little more... Uh, I, I, saw it. I saw it, yeah. Yeah, it did. It did. And then, you know, I ended up losing that account because I would basically just kind of mimic the same so i started a new one but now it's a, his name's and no one knows it's me the, but uh the jackson, some jackson might, aiden jackson aiden yes aiden. i guess I some people it. pick up but uh, i say the most outlandish shit because that's i hear from liberals black black people can't get ids they they don't even know what a computer is what are you talking about so Crazy. i i bit on that one a couple of days ago and then when i started reading the other comments people were like is this emory emory they were tagging you i'm like motherfucker yeah, I, well, I told him, I said, no, I said, I've got mutual got friends with this friend. guy called with him in Miami. I was like, no, it's, it's, it's a real, but it's just, you know, but it's really taking their attitude, their condescending attitude uh, towards minorities in general and just kind of mimicking it or parroting it. And, you know, I think it's funny. It, it is hilarious because you, you read it first and you're like, how can this person be this dumb? And it kind of like sparks a little bit of anger. And then you realize who's behind you. You're like, God damn it. That's fucking hilarious. Good job. Yeah. The other day I said, uh, we got to get to the polls. I said, all black people, if you need to know how to vote, inbox me. I said, if you can't read or write, send a voice message. You know, cause being that they couldn't even read the tweet or something, it's so condescending, but that's how I, they treat minorities like they're handicapped. Like it's a disability. And it's and there, there, there are huge accounts. Like, uh, what's the, uh, Brooklyn dad and Joe from Jers and yeah, they, yeah. they actually, these people have millions of followers and they talk like that for real. Yeah. The crass and stains. And it's just like, what are you saying? Like you hear yourself. Did, did, have, did you guys hear that clip of his voice? I've heard his I've voice heard where he's like, Hey everybody, I am Brian Crescent. Oh my God. I heard it. And I thought it was a joke. <laughs> I was I, I, I bookmarked it because I wanted to show you, and I don't remember why. I, I think it was like he really late. talks like that. He, he sounds like a black comedian from the '90s impersonating a white guy. Like, hey, everybody, oh, and all that. Oh, it's, oh, it, it, yeah. it's yeah. When you hear it, you're like, oh, this oh, makes so much sense. sense. I, I heard I it was from a, a Twitter space, and that for for I don't know the first thirty seconds or so, I'm like, there's no fucking way this is his voice, and then I went in the comments. And there were people that had, I had never seen a video of him before. And I clicked on the video on the same voice. And I was like, F a fucking course. That's what he sounds like. <laughs> now I know Brian's like address. address. I've got his address. And like, I just might send it to so me. I'm like, oh, I'm not him? do nothing. Yeah. Or nothing. Like, I looked up his house. This guy lives in a fucking mansion in Florida. I mean, it is, it is impressive. impressive. And you know, that they, I guess they I guess got they that, got that way from just being fucking, fucking idiots. idiots. So I, I read, and I don't know how much truth there is to it, but I read that he and his brother had initially been buying smaller, like meat, like accounts, you know, like smaller than yours or around, gradually working their way up to buying bigger accounts from people and turning them into Stan accounts for themselves. Yeah. Brian's, Brian's account, account was a Jonas Brothers a fan account. And then yeah, Ed's yeah. account was a Justin Bieber fan account. And I don't know if I they know made if them been, and gained the gained followers and then, and then put their names on it or if they just bought those. I've seen. I would believe them. both ways, honestly. Yeah. I mean, either way it goes. Like they would have been a Bieber Jonas Brothers fan. Yeah. yeah, yeah either way it goes, it's, it's deceitful and it's just yeah. It's, yeah. It's in, uh, disingenuous. Facebook. And I don't, I have a couple of pages and accounts and stuff on Facebook for other ventures that I've had in the past that had like decent followings, but they're just dormant now. And I thought about it periodically, like merging them or whatever. Mm -hmm. But Facebook made that change a couple of years ago where there's like the transparency thing. And it's like, this used to be this or whatever. Oh, And they also have a thing where you can only change. Like you can't full stop going there. Like he's wrong. She's right. You can't go in there and completely delete. He's wrong. She's right. You can change a word or a couple words, 
but you have to go through this progression and people that follow you get notifications as it happens. So people know that the change is coming versus um, other than the handle on Twitter, which you can't change, but your name, your uh, image and stuff like that, you can. Instagram, you can basically change everything. So you you have the ability on a lot of other platforms where you can completely change who you are. Mm-hmm. And now people look at you and you're huge on Twitter and they're like, oh, I got to follow him on Facebook or he's huge on Facebook. I need to follow him on TikTok. And it doesn't always translate to the same views and impressions and stuff like that. But generally speaking, if you can find one platform where you can get people to support your content, you're going to grow on the other platforms as well. And yeah, I... Well, my YouTube that I scrapped was, I was out to eat with Jesse Payton. He's a hilarious comedian. I'm a fan of his, and we're friends. And I'm like, dude, one day you're going to get a Netflix special. He's super funny. And he's real big on Instagram and I think TikTok. But we were talking about the YouTube, and I was like, I'm about to scrap mine. And he's like, hey, you know, I'd take it over. And, and I would never have sent that over to somebody that wasn't hilarious, that wasn't conservative, like in, in line with what my fans would want and appreciate. And so I've had a few messages. Well, who the fuck is this guy on your YouTube account? But he was able to switch everything over to his name. I worked with this tech guy, you know, and everything worked out. But, um, but he, he was able to switch it all over, and I just started from scratch. But he is fucking hilarious. So if anybody's still following my YouTube, that's Jesse Payton. He's my main man, 50 grand. And I would never leave y'all with somebody that was a douche. That's so it's funny that you did bring that up for YouTube. So there's been, uh, I mean, this has gone on forever, but now they're kind of more sophisticated with it. Um, some of the bigger brands and accounts that have been hacked over the last couple of years, you can convert the name, the URL, everything really quick, and they'll go in there and delete all your content and start uploading new stuff. And one of the biggest things is they'll upload, like, you know, Elon talking about some cryptocurrency or something like that and how it's going to be the next. And they're, they're promoting their own crypto scam in mm-hmm. somebody else's account and then they have to go in there and fight to get their account back and do all this stuff and then all their content's gone so yeah i, I mean I, I get it in a sense it's really hard for a lot of youtube channels once they have an established face to bring on another host or for people to move on to other projects and stuff so if you can just outright change the name and change everything you're probably going to be better off than just easing somebody in because then people are gonna be like, oh, I don't like the new guy or the new girl. I like the old guy. He needs to come back. And that's all your comments are going to be. Right. You know, right. Why, why is memory still hosting the channel? Why is it this weirdo? I don't like him. Or they might like him a lot. Who knows? I, I haven't looked at any of the comments or even, even the content on there, but, but I think he, Oh, he would be, when you were talking about content on the internet, he would be one of those guys where it's like, Jesse's fucking hilarious. I, we're not even like close friends. We went out to eat one time and we've, we've talked on the phone a couple of times. I mean, he's cool, but, but professionally he is really fucking funny. Check him out. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, so I was just thinking about this too, as I was, as I was saying that if you were to replace me on this show, the show would grow faster. But if I were to replace you on any of your content, people would be like, it would die. this guy's an idiot. Get him out of here. Well, you never know. Yeah. You know, I got, I got, Keep throwing shit at a wall. Eventually, something's going to stick. Like I said, I started my YouTube in 2007, September 2007, and I didn't go viral until 2014. And that was, I was on my third YouTube account at that point because I kept getting banned, you know, dumb shit. But um, I finally, finally, something, something stuck. And I got lucky. You know, I really did. And, and so you just, you, it's consistency, man. You're not going to, it's not going to happen overnight. I have, well, some people like Hawk Tua. But, but, you know, I have people hit me up all the time. They ask for advice. I'm like, consistency, just execute. Don't even message me. Go fucking create. Go fucking create. And if you, some people say, oh, man, I've followed you since your YouTube, first YouTube video. I'm like, which was my first YouTube video? Like the Silver Raid, I'm like, that was the 500. If you had saw my original first 300 videos, oh, you cringe. You're terrible. But yeah. it's like a sword. You keep sharpening, 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 sharpening until one day you can be like, swing, swing. It takes time. Yeah, I... I I follow and subscribe to a couple other content creators on YouTube and other places where when I hear them talk or I see who they are, I'm like, okay, you definitely have put in a lot of effort into this because if you were just starting right now, I would not be subscribed to you. <laughs> right. You, we were talking a couple of weeks ago when I was a kid, I used to think that in order to be an actor or comedian or anything like that, you had to be attractive. 
Like, because I just felt like everybody that was famous was attractive. Dave Buscemi says otherwise. otherwise. What was that? Dave Buscemi says otherwise. otherwise. Yeah, yeah. So, like, now I see people and I'm like, okay, it can be anybody. You just yeah, have to yeah. do the right thing and know the right people and, and things like that. So, the, but the slow burn for somebody ugly like me with my wife, uh, who's beautiful, is difficult. But I know that the ends that we achieve eventually will be good. <laughs> well, look at Gabor Sadibe, who I think is a very beautiful woman. She's she's big, you know. She's a big woman, but you know, there's a place for everybody. She she nailed Precious. It was an amazing role, and she was in Tower House, you know. So, you know, where she played the more not downtrodden, but she's more attractive, put together and stuff. Or even Melissa McCarthy. I said I've said it before. I said she should be on People's Most Sexiest Woman list. That when she's in Bridesmaids, playing this no makeup, just you know. Da, 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 da. I think that I think, that, I think it's beautiful inherently that a woman can, can do that. I think she's, I think she's a, knockout a knockout for that for reason, reason. You know what I mean? What's uh so her and uh the Australian girl are like my two favorite. I can't think of her name. The other the big girl, she's Australian played. Oh, uh, Pe- Pe- she played uh I, Fat uh, Kelly and it's perfect. No, not Schumer. Um no. <laughs> You call it Amy Schumer fan? No. I know you're talking. I'm thinking on her name. Rebel Wilson? Wilson? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, You you threw me off by calling her Fat Amy, so I was thinking Amy's girl. If if I saw her in a movie poster, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to watch yeah, yeah, she, yeah, oh, yeah. She, yeah. She played Fat Amy in Pitch Perfect. Like, why do you call yourself Fat Amy? And she's like, because everybody else is going to do it behind my back or something. She's fucking yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah, she's uh. Both I, I, she and Melissa McCarthy have lost some weight recently, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, I've seen pictures. So, um, Rebel Wilson looks like, and this somebody's going to take this out of context and and misconstrue what I'm saying here. But you know how when uh, Jonah Hill lost weight, oh yeah, oh yeah, she looks like the same. She doesn't look like a boy. I'm just saying, like they look like they went through the exact same process, whether that's. Well, when you dramatically drop or... weight very, very fast. And yeah. you, I think Jonah Hill's a good looking motherfucker. I mean, he really, really is. He's coming from super bad to where he's now. And yeah. even Lizzo. Lizzo. Look at Lizzo out here on a on a, a weight loss journey. She looks fucking great. And I like to oh, see I, that. I didn't yeah, know. He, this he, is new, this I, new I didn't know me. about it until I saw him post about it a couple of weeks ago. He's like, we don't align on basically anything, politics or anything, but give her props she's you know going through it she's putting in the effort she's losing weight i don't i don't care for any of her content i'm that's not the kind of music i listen to so yeah but i, I can never, never dislike somebody enough to, you know what i mean pile on or whatever uh just like the krasenstein somebody i was on live though like would you I led crash and scenes come over and swim. I'm like, fuck yeah, you know, we hang out, have a beer and shit. Like, I'm not like a complete fucking jaded. I like to be around people that I can disagree with. I, if, dude, if I wanted to hang around with uh, a person that agreed with everything that I said, I'd just get a fucking mirror. You know what I mean? Like, hey, yes, yes, yes. You know, I don't, I don't need, that. I got a neighbor over here, man. He's one of my good buddies. And we are completely fucking, he's liberal progressive. I'm conservative traditional. And I love hanging out with him because he makes me see shit from a different way. I make him see shit from a different way, and it's great. See, I can I can be around people, but there's a point when I'm just gonna have to make fun of you, and <laughs> that's that's typically the point where people are like I don't want to be around him. Well, so. they can give me shit too, and they do. You know, my my liberal friends, I've got a few, I've got a few that are really well known, and and they think I'm fucking stupid. I think they're stupid, and we agree to disagree, and it's all about. Oh, it's inherent love, you know. My race is human. Yeah, I can get behind that. I'm a, I'm an American. That's all I really care about. Yeah, as long as you're in line with American values, we're we're cool in some level. Yeah, yeah. The people that want whatever else to happen to America, whether that's be invaded, which is basically fucking impossible, uh, or for us to fall to communism or whatever. No, like yeah. I can't. I can't be part of that. Yeah, but I also yeah, but don't I pick on those people because it's not nice to pick on the mentally retarded. respect. <laughs> I would pick on them just because <laughs> I, I I have a hard time, um, like keeping my humor 
at a level that's reasonable to the majority of people. So if I make a joke towards somebody that I respect, it's probably not going to hit the way that I want it to. And then they're not going to like me anymore. And so, so I, I tend not to make jokes and be funny and do things like that around people that I do like. But the difference between the two of you is he has empathy because he's gone through. Well, he's also funny and I'm not. So, so much. Whereas you lack empathy and. It's true. Here's my, here's my policy on Twitter. I don't say anything that I wouldn't say to somebody's face in a closed elevator. And, and another thing I looked at, I look at some of my responses. I'm like, oh my God, I sound so condescending and pompous. And when I respond to somebody, I'm like, no, it sounds like this. No, you're, no wrong, you're wrong, genius. Yeah. Stop being so stupid. What they don't realize, I'm over like, no, you're wrong, genius, stupid. I'm like I'm laughing like I'm not this. But I read some of my responses. I'm like, oh, my God, I got to try to convey my. I don't take the Internet that seriously. And then right. we should spar, we should debate. But I'm not over here like, oh, no, this is I'm not in the business of hurting feelings. I try not to. But I think that I come across kind of a fucking jerk online. I, maybe I am. You, you know, what would be a good, you know, you know, the people that go around, they have, uh, they ask people on the street, random questions, or they'll show them something and ask them. I think somebody needs to go around doing a segment where they just take random tweets out of context. Like you don't know who the person is. They don't have to be anybody famous and just have the person read it the way that they think it was written and have the video of the person that wrote it to compare. Like how do people actually there's your next next skit. Yeah. <laughs> you could you could write it. You could do your your tone, and then you could go out on the street and have people read it in in what they think it's the tone that it's written in, and then compare it. You know, do one of those like mashup videos. You could it could even be one of those things where it's like, you know, you switch back and forth between the two. You read a sentence and you clip in their sentence. Maybe the Maybe Jackson the, Aiden Cooper account, and then when they're like, "Oh my oh, God, God, this is just hate speech," I'm like I wrote it. I'm being stupid, I'm, man. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know, take, don't take everything at face value on the damn internet. Yeah. You could, it, it, assuming that it doesn't get out of hand and you don't lose that account. Um, like our, our podcast account says that it's automated by me. And I mean, it is, but I have people attacking. Anytime somebody doesn't like something that we say when they see the automated by Lemax Media, they're like, oh, the bots are out again. I'm like, I, I actually just did this the other day. I fucking did this and I took a picture of it with the tweet in the background. I was like, oh yeah, bop this motherfucker. And he was yeah. like, good job. Your AI got good, correct number of fingers. And I was like, Jesus Christ. It's an automated stupid. publisher. Like, oh no, but they, they come at me and have said, uh, uh the dude, the other dude, dude called me a dyke the other day. I don't know. They don't say so know. much shit. You know, he did. And I, he, then, then if I go on some of these accounts like Jake Shields or, uh, if I disagree with them, they all, they're like, yeah, yeah, we know you're a Jew, you're a, Jew, you're a Jewish. I'm like, I'm an Irish Catholic, dude. I'm like, you know, like, what the fuck are you talking? They, they, so, so here's my thing with the internet, too. If they're like, hey, Emery, that's why you're wearing an ugly red shirt. I'm wearing a white shirt. And how much energy am I going to expend going back and forth with this motherfucker yeah. about what color shirt? It's just something so untrue and ridiculous. So I try to, and I, and I do stay away from a lot of just absurdities, you know. It's hard because to do. people it. love to hate. So I have they actually do. made... There are two points to this. I've actually made a couple really good friends on Twitter because I was a complete asshole to them. And then after a bunch of back and forth, we both realized that we were just reading each other's tweets incorrectly. And then like we became great friends because we both realized I'm like, oh, fuck, damn it. This guy's really cool. Fuck. <laughs> now I have to apologize to him. There's and, a lot uh, of people I follow. Yeah. Go ahead. There's a lot of people I follow that'll say something contrarian to me, and, and I, I roast, them. and then they'll be like touche, and I'm like ah, follow. I'm like I like that. And there, there's this one guy I follow, Owen, some black dude. We agree on on nothing, on nothing. But he throws his point, I throw my point, and it's like okay. And that's why I follow him because he has that lost art of agree to disagree, and everything's got to be just my way or the highway. I can't do that. Right. Yeah, I I don't know. I, I I had a Twitter account like early on and then it kind of fizzled out because, you know, all my friends, people that I was communicating with were on Facebook. And now since 2019, 2020-ish, I've been back. But I made the mistake. I accidentally suspended or uh, paused, whatever you want to call it, 
my personal account that I had. I had the the account that I use now used to be my company's business uh, Twitter account, and Twitter you know said you can only keep it paused or whatever for thirty days before it's deleted. And I came back after the thirty day period. I didn't take it seriously, and I couldn't get my account back. And mm-hmm. I was followed by some of the coolest fucking people. And I was so upset. So I've been rebuilding it back up under my company's account, which I do have. I mean, you follow us or me, not the podcast yet. Um, yes, yeah, inbox to me. I'll give you a follow. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, like there's there's a lot of really cool people on there, and the fact that it's public for the most part, I mean, obviously some people can protect their tweets, but um, the fact that it's public, you can get a better global picture of who this person actually is. If you go back and scroll through some of their replies and retweets and content that they post themselves and stuff versus like on Facebook and things like that, you really only get a picture of who that person is like in the last five days, 10 days, whatever. And I just, you know, I I think Twitter is kind of the direction. And I mean, that's obviously why Facebook made threads because they realize that that's the direction everybody's going. Well, on Twitter also, or or X, let's just say, you can go to their profile and go to the search thing and you can type in a keyword like Trump. Trump. See how they feel about Trump Trump or abortion or Biden or or food, uh, you know, cuisine or something. And you can see where they have have talked about that particular topic before. And then you can kind of gain a lot of insight into it. I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's who who have you done that to? Off the the Crassus teams. That's how I dunk on them. So he'll be like, uh, uh, fifty thousand people showed up to Trump rally, but uh, that doesn't that equate doesn't to votes. Vote. And uh, so I go to his search thing and I type in Biden rally, and then he's like, oh, Biden has fifty thousand people showing up. This is going to be a landslide. And I go, bing bing, post it. I'm like, is this you? And he contradicts himself religiously he's like the most most contradicting person you've ever met in your life so he's one that i really go to uh but if i want to know uh i don't who else have i done uh the tapes sometimes they follow me you unfollow me uh tristan still follow me sometimes i go try to get their takes on stuff i think they're fucking hilarious what do you what do you think is going to happen with that with their whole ordeal look look i was cool with Andrew in 2017. He he followed me. I didn't even know he followed me. And then he got like, we we'd talk, we'd started talking in 2017 about shit. And then all of a sudden, he just blew up, blew up, blew up. And I ended up seeing that he followed me. I'm like, oh, that's the fucking dude. Paul Joseph watched and retweeted. We had a conversation about it. And so we were cool. And um, he ended up uh, posting about Palestine. And I said, there, you know, he's like, there's nothing I can do. I feel so helpless. I said, they're accepting mercenaries. Oh, he unfollowed me over that. And I'm like, I still love the guy, you know. But, man, some videos are circulating where they're saying really slimy shit. And I'm like, it's getting hard to defend. Um, You're a father of five girls and you think I know. they're cool? I'm, I'm, mm, I think they're funny. I definitely think they're funny. I'm, but now I, I think Andrew's more... Sl- or was slimy and then he like, converted to Mu- Islam. I think he's a lot different, but I think Tristan's kind of a gentleman. You know, I don't know. Or, I don't know if they were trolling. It's just all got to come out in the wash, but, but you know, I try not to, you know, like in the Covington kid situation or, you know, when everybody jumped on and said he was racist and you know, he ended up suing CNN for an untold amount of money. I try to let things play out before I just knee jerk, but some of the shit coming out is kind of indefensible. It's things that they've said in videos. And it's just like, oh man, how do you fucking, what'd you say? Yeah. yeah, I, when I used to see some of their content before I really knew who they were, my first thought was that they were just trolling and stuff, but now, I don't know. No, like, yeah. I fully believe that they have drunk the Kool-Aid and they are trying to pass out the Kool-Aid to everybody else. i tell you what, we're going to find out, it looks like. like but here's my thing, my too. If they really have really damning really evidence and human trafficking, and some other thing. Okay, they've said some slimy shit. Uh, maybe they're maybe creeps. They're creep. uh, but uh, let's, let's talk about the, the, the legal system here. I don't understand how they could be walking free if there's so much evidence and so much damning testimony that says that they were trafficking, they were doing this or that. Are they slimy? Yeah, I guarantee it. Because, you know, they've had those webcam girls and stuff, which I think is fucking weird. Uh, but to each their own, you know, it's sex sells. Everybody's buying. I get it. But um, but I, 
legally, legally are, they are they guilty of what they're, they're doing? I, I don't see how they could be walking free after so much investigation, you know, so I'm kind of on the fence about the legal side of it. I have a, I have a couple. Diddy's out. I don't think Diddy did, did anything wrong. What has he done wrong? He's a freak. He's a freak. Unless I'm missing something. I, I don't what know. Am I, I, don't know all the, I don't know all the stuff behind that, but um, there was a guy. All I've heard is that he's gay. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I know like bits and pieces of stuff that was on social media, uh, but they were talking about him sex trafficking and stuff as well. What was yeah, the, What yeah. were the actual charges? I don't I think he's been charged. Off my head, but he's paid off multiple women because he has physically harmed them. Right. Well, there's one video circulating of a celebrity singer where he's in a hotel and he chases her down. He's in his bath, chases her down. He throws her on the ground. He drags her back. Well, apparently she was walking off with a hundred thousand dollars in like a Rolex. Obviously, he's in the shower and she's all of a sudden making her way to the elevator. And I, I don't fucking condemn him. If if I'm in a hotel and I have some chicks come over and she's walking out with my possessions, I'm gonna go snatch her ass up. And if I'm wrong, I don't want to be right. You're not gonna steal from me. You're not gonna take from me. And uh. You know, I don't know necessarily how to drug her through the hallway, but I got my shit back by all means, you know. So I don't subscribe to the whole thing where we should let a woman get away with certain things we wouldn't let a man get away with just because they were born female. I'm not going to let you take advantage of me. Hit me, assault me, or steal my shit just because you have tits and the pussy. I don't think that's fair. But this kind of circulates back to when we were talking about the former employers. They're going to stick it down to... You know, we definitely fired them for this reason. So it could, we don't necessarily need to believe what's coming out now because it, we don't really know. It could just be, we're trying to throw anything well, you, at it to you know discredit. The whole, you know, the whole Disney thing. And I, I, I have another question that I want to ask you as well, Emery, before we, we got a uh, school pickup coming up here in a few minutes. Um, the uh, Disney thing. I just watched a video that was talking about the whole, the whole signing the terms of service thing. The uh, the woman that died from the allergic reaction, the Disney Park restaurant that was owned and operated by somebody else, but on Disney property. Do you know what I'm talking about? I feel like you told me about this. So Disney tried to say that the husband of the the dead woman mm -hmm. couldn't sue because he signed the terms of service for Disney Plus, which in the terms of service for Disney Plus had language like that sue. Well, it says that you have to do. Uh, forced arbitration, but it also says that you also can't sue like their partners or subsidiaries or anything. So anybody that Disney does business with. So let's say uh, we go to a Michigan game and a sports commentator from ESPN throws a football and hits somebody in the head. You can't sue ESPN or Disney because you signed the terms of service for Disney Plus. Is what is what Disney tried to say in court. It yeah, sounds like you couldn't idiot. do a digital entity versus a tangible physical entity. And it's like there is two different things. I don't see how that would up. So, so Disney backpedaled because the the victim, the the woman that died, didn't sign the terms of service. So they are going to court now, but they think that this is going to set legal precedent precedent into the future. That oh, you went to the local restaurant and you signed your receipt. You you paid your tip and you signed your receipt, and they had language on there that said. You know, they get your firstborn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so they actually made that analogy. They said it has to be like somewhat reasonable or whatever. Um, no. So completely doing a 180 again here real quick before we sign off. Uh, you shared the video and I, I responded to you with the, the GoFundMe on. I don't know if you saw that, but the woman that was arrested on 4th of July, the noise disturbance or whatever it was, the cop forced his way into yeah, the house. Yeah. How do you think that's going to go? Um, uh, this is okay. So here's the details. The kids didn't run into the house. The kids answered the door, saw it was a deputy and took off running. I'm sure they were outside playing manhunt or some something dumb, but they ran the home and the cop put his foot in the door and held the door open and, and gained that little bit of entry in the, uh, the threshold and was like, uh, I think that's wrong. Uh, I think that. Cops have Cops the legal, have legal obligation and the uh, impunity to, if a, if a suspect, suspect is running from the police and runs into a house, they can go in. That's, right. that's, there's a word for it. Dion Joseph brought up earlier. It escapes me. Is but, is but, circumstances or whatever? Yeah, but, yeah, but you can't just you know, open the door. A kid 
tried to shut the door and didn't force your way in. I, so I think so that, I think that uh, can't believe I can't he arrested him. I mean, yeah. I mean, Jesus Christ. I, I So I skimmed the GoFundMe, and she said something to the fact that they, they had had some friends over or something along those lines, and some people had left and were coming in. So when the kids answered the door, they actually thought it was somebody that was leaving the party and just, like, forgot something yeah, or whatever. Yeah. That's why they opened the door, because they thought it was somebody that they were needing to let back in. And when they shut the door to go get their mom, he forced his way in, and she stood there at the front door. Have you seen this? No, I have no idea she, what you're talking about. She stood at the front door, because he was in the past the threshold, and she's saying, you need to step outside. We can talk about this outside. And he's like, no, I don't need to. And she's like, this is my property. You're invading my property. He's like, no, now that I'm in your house, I own it and all this other yeah, shit. Yeah, he said, I own this I house now. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they they just, because it went viral, made the news and stuff, It the the, the sheriff's office is has opened an investigation into it. But it happened on July 3rd. So it's taken this long. She was, she was arrested for, the charges were resisting arrest. And I think uh, it's orderly. Yeah, and contributing to minor delinquency in her own house. Yeah. The the kids, to the best of my knowledge, weren't arrested. They have there's nothing that says that they were drinking. But yeah, he he wanted for whatever reason to come in. She wouldn't let him, so he grabbed her and threw her against the wall and arrested her. She never touched him. Nothing. I watched, I watched the video so much, I put myself in the shoes and said, "Okay, how would I handle this situation?" And dude, it was immediate. I said, I looked over his shoulder and said, "Is this officer with you?" And as soon as he peeked back, he was in a perfect point. You got to hit him yeah, off. Push his motherfucking ass. Shut the door, dead both. And I would have called 911 and yep. said, come get your boy. And you know, they, had, they had a doorbell camera and they had people, there were two people, I believe, behind her recording. Yeah. So I backed the blue, back, but that situation would have made me really fucking nervous, especially yeah. when he said, no, I own this house now. Yeah. Motherfucker, we're at, we're at uh, uh, you know, you're committing a federal, federal felony. felony. We're at a, we're at a, a constitutional a standpoint at this point. point. You know, it's not so, it's so white and black, but I mean, or whatever. But I'd not have pushed his ass out. Yeah, and I i mean, he's lucky he's in California. <laughs> not oh, he's in California? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ri uh, Riverside. Yeah. Riverside. Yeah. yeah. And that's why. But oh, I mean, yeah, we just answered why it happened. You, 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 go, you do that in where you're at, even in Kentucky. Or Texas. And it's probably, or... it's probably not going to play out. But then, once again, they'll find a reason. The, the officer was thought a crime was being committed and yeah. you killed him on your property. Motherfucker. He was an armed invader. Yeah, pretty much. And, yeah. Now, if I, now, think, if about I think about it, really, really I'm, I'm, I'm like, I, I catch more I flies than honey guy. Maybe, maybe, maybe I could have. Yes. Well, I mean, you want to talk to one of my kids? Like what's going on? I, so there's so many ways that it played out, but I, I was, it would have made me a little, a little scared. This guy's in my fucking door with the, his foot down, you know, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's weird that's shit. Weird. We'll see how that plays out. Um, so, Emery, we're close out here. Uh, do school pickup and all that good stuff. What projects are you working on? What do you want people to seek out? Um, you know, and where can they find you? I mean, I know where they can find you. I'm on X predominantly. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm just shit posting over there. But I have a lot of fun with it. Uh, but DreamlandTranquility.com. That's my that's my baby. That's my my love, my, you know, it's, it's just something I love to do. And y'all talked earlier, I was telling about being burnt out. I was like, man, I'd love to just put a cubicle somewhere and just have a normal kind of job. If I didn't, if social media kind of wasn't my, my niche, I'd throw my phone in the fucking river, man. But, but so buy weed. There you go. Um, yeah, we'll drop, we'll drop a link to that probably in the pinned comment because I don't know if YouTube will be happy if we put it in the description. Yeah, I don't think I drop it on drop YouTube. It on if you YouTube. post it on X on or X. something, that's fine. But I don't, don't get, and you can edit that by weed part. Actually, I've sold weed, weed on YouTube. They let me as long as you're not using it. Because I've done a bunch of lives where I'm like, go here, go here, I show the shit. But it's, it's, but, but still, don't fucking get yourself in a pickle over something so stupid. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll read through what they say. I, I, I am that meticulous person where I'll go through and I'll read it. And, uh, yeah. Mal malicious compliance is how I like to live my life. <laughs> so, well, uh, thanks for, thanks for coming on, man. We appreciate your time. Uh, yeah, thanks for having sorry me. For the, sorry for the technical hiccups there at the beginning. Uh, this has been awesome. Hey, thank, thank you so you. much, man. It's, I've had a lot of fun. All right. Well, uh, we'll catch you later. For everybody watching or listening to this, go follow Emery everywhere. Tell him that we sent you sure. so that he knows that we have like three or four <laughs> subscribers and followers. 
And uh, yeah, can't wait to see uh, the next viral Emory King content. I tell you what, you anybody what? from the podcast, podcast that's watching this, if you if inbox me on me X and tell me you're sent from the show, show, I'll take, I'll take the people that do, do it, I'll put your name on a wheel and I'll uh, spin, uh, spin it and I'll post it. Uh, pick somebody to win somebody some, uh, some uh, merch from Dreamland Tranquility. Damn. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very Something much. Cool. cool. Awesome. Well, you guys heard him. I'm going to clip this and I'll put it somewhere in the middle to tease people. <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> we appreciate All right, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. It's been awesome. Yeah. Have a, have a good rest of your week. Yeah, yes, it is yeah I'll try. Right. All these kids. Love y'all, man. Take it easy. Take it easy. Yeah, you Thank too. You. Thank you.